In the last 24 hours, the nation is focused on Bloomington, Indiana because of a certain a red sweatered basketball coach. But in Bloomington, the buzz is it's football season, and certainly it is, with North Carolina State getting set to take on Indiana. Rich Waltz, Don McPherson, I think the buzz is because Antoine Randall-L is back again. The junior quarterback is really something. Antoine Randall-L could be the most exciting quarterback in college football. He has the same skills as Michael Vick with the ability to make people miss in the perimeter. He also has the ability, once he gets on the outside, to throw the ball down the field with tremendous accuracy. Last team to beat Michael Vick and Virginia Tech, of course, was Florida State. Their assistant head coach for a long time is now the head coach at North Carolina State. And Chuck Amato's got a very similar assignment in this Antoine Randall L. And Chuck Amato knows how to build defenses. 18 years as a Florida State defensive assistant, he knows how to build defenses and stop quarterbacks like Antoine Randall L. And he's brought a new look, some new shoes, and a new helmet. North Carolina State, Indiana, first to South Bend, and Chris Fowler. Thank you, and if you're watching on ESPN2, welcome to South Bend. Plenty on the horn, front of skirts on the Irish coming up. But back now to Marshall of Michigan State. Bobby Williams trying to sound like the underdog. He's the Big Ten team, he's at home, but Marshall does have a lot of experience, nine senior starters on defense, and they won all those games that we're talking about. You know, Marshall has won more ball games in the 1990s, 114 in any other Division I team. But remember one thing, they've never played a Big Ten team. I think Marshall is a fine football team, but Michigan State's won seven straight games at home. I think Michigan State's power and size beat Marshall. I think Marshall has an opportunity here to prove that they are a legitimate uh, contender in college football. It's not just about Randy Moss and Chad Pennington. They play great defense, but Coach is right. Too much big people up front for Michigan State. And also another game to watch, John Navarre. Remember how he got started last week for the Michigan Wolverines? Today it's the Rice Owls. Interesting to see if he can follow up the performance last week, 15 and 19 for 265 yards. Again today, I think he will. He's a good quarterback. Against Rice. Yeah, that's Another right. intersectional <laughs> Big Ten, Pac-10 game, Ohio State and Arizona. These teams were both tough on defense, dreadful on offense. Now it's a late night affair. Is this an offensive pillow fight at night down there in the desert? <laughs> Take, the it guys easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Now, I, I think Ohio State has some issues up front in their offensive line. Lack of heart for these guys because they won't go out. 11 times they went out last year, and they just went out and showed up. And I think today, against Arizona, they better come out ready to play. They have plenty of skill, but the offensive line lacks heart. They need to show it tonight to have a chance. I like Ohio State to win. I don't like Ohio State's uh, offense. I like their defense. So I'm picking Arizona to upset the Buckeyes in the desert. That's my upset special. You guys have a lot of upsets around the Absolutely. country this week. Interesting. Ready for this? Let's talk about Nebraska and Notre Dame. Will it be another big upset in the history of this program? More lore. Something to build on a measuring stick for this team. Or will it be... The ultimate woodshed by a powerful <laughs> visiting team in here and something that's very humbling for this program. Well, I, I think that a couple of things are going to happen today. I think the crowd and being a heavy underdog in this football game will keep Notre Dame in this football game throughout. I think people around the country are expecting Nebraska to blow Notre Dame out. In my opinion, going to be surprised. I think Notre Dame will battle and play very hard. However, this is still Nebraska. Eric Crouch throwing the football and playing great defense. Nebraska comes in and beats Notre Dame. You like Nebraska. I like Nebraska. I like this tie. Is this a beautiful Notre Dame tie? Dan Devine tie. Forget about it. Forget about it. Nebraska. I think. Oh, you like them there. I like you them. Like them. them. Like There's a mixed crowd like them today. here in South Bend. It'll be much louder for the Irish now. inside the stadium. We are here all day. A timeout for football. Good battle on ESPN. Marshall of Michigan State on ESPN2. NC State and Indiana. We'll see you later. Juan Randall, quarterback of the Indiana Hoos. Watch today's game. You see me throw it. You know you see me running it. I might just catch the pass. Now try to keep your eye on me. Don't you blink. I'll be everywhere. We got NC State next. Now showing Antoine Randall L. Elusive, electric, exciting, extremely entertaining. impossible to catch. Here's your chance. Coming up, North Carolina State and Indiana. <laughs> Bloomington, Indiana. Yes, the main attraction is Antoine Randall L. And the main attraction for us, the season opener for the Hoosiers. The Wolfpack of North Carolina State already 1-0, and the Hoosiers open their season at home in Memorial Stadium. 
Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Don McPherson. We just heard Antoine Randall L. say, I'll be everywhere. We know he's one of the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten, Don McPherson. Will he play in other spots today? Well, Randall L. is a threat every time he steps on the ball field. We don't know where he'll line up, but we know one thing for sure. In his first two seasons, he's been the most productive quarterback in the history of the Big Ten. He's a known quantity, and he's a real headache for the new head coach of North Carolina State, Chuck Amato, because stopping him is almost impossible. But Amato has another quarterback on his mind. He's only 18 years of age. He's a true freshman. Philip Rivers gets the start for North Carolina State. If it's like his first start, things will go well. Philip Rivers is the hottest quarterback in college football. His numbers last week were not only freshman records for North Carolina State, but they led the nation. They had a phenomenal week last week and a double overtime win over Arkansas State. The Hoosiers are here. So is Antoine Randall L. Stick around. First to the studio, Reese Davis. All right, guys, thanks a lot. We'll look forward to that one. And a lot of great action coming up in our College Football Today studios. Joining me, as always, Rod Gilmore and Coach John Makovic. And uh, with a notable exception, guys, is Texas and Michigan State and a few others. Almost everybody's got a week under their belt now. What do you expect to see? Well, I don't know about you, but I think what we're going to see is whatever you see is what you get today. Teams make their biggest improvement from week one to week two. All the kings get worked out, so the characters of the team come out today. And the way they play today, I think, is how they'll play all season long, Coach. Yeah, we've already had one big upset today already. Lee didn't take the home team. <laughs> that is an upset. Keep it in mind. We talked about Antoine Randall at the top. If you're a young man out there wanting to play quarterback, watch today right here with us all day we start with Ranton, anton randall then we have quincy carter from georgia in the afternoon tonight ben laird versus romero miller in the acc and then out west kurt kittner probably the number one challenger to drew Brees in the ooh, big ten ooh, ooh, he's hot and all of these games we have and we've got pickle juice i want to make sure that you guys don't cramp up a lot of teams are drinking pickle juice we got four games and a show we'll get you some of that john just like georgia's using it and you can see the dogs against south carolina don and ted is dog drinking two ounces of pickle juice every day trying to avoid the cramps against loose teams stop that long losing streak auburn and ole miss as john mentioned will finish with illinois and san diego state but first we've got antoine randall l some non-controversial news from indiana coming up i think quarterback taking on nc state in a bit North Carolina State has ventured to Big Ten country as the Wolfpack play game two of this season against Indiana. Let's go down to the sidelines in Holly Rowe. Holly? Guys, Randall L. may be everywhere. At least he has been so far in the pregame warm-up. He threw to his receivers for quite a while, and then he went to the back of the line to catch passes from his backup quarterback, Tommy Jones. The coaches say that just the threat of having him in there at so many different positions, running, receiving, and even punting, is going to be a distraction for North Carolina State. So don't be surprised if you see him everywhere. Camp Cameron said that if he does get Tommy Jones some snaps, he doesn't want Randall L. standing next to him. He wants him out on the field. Cameron in his fourth season here at Indiana, and many feel this is the year they turn the corner. And, of course, Chuck Amato, the longtime assistant head coach at Florida State, to Bobby Bowden, his first year, back at his alma mater at 53 years of age. Amato and North Carolina State won the toss, deferred. Indiana gets the football. Austin Herbert will kick it off. For the Wolfpack, who won in double overtime last week. Darren Graham on the return, and Graham is out to the 17-yard line. John McPherson, what we haven't said about Antoine Randall L is that he's a very good quarterback in the pocket. And that sounds strange because he gets out of it so often. It does sound strange, but he does a tremendous job of spreading the ball around. He had two receivers last year, Jerry Dorsey and Percy Gaddis, both had 600 yards receiving last season. He knows how to get the ball to his guy. Both of those guys are back this year. Randall L. is a junior. He came in here as a freshman and set the Big Ten on its ear. He was one of the first of those prototype quarterbacks you see now that can get on the edge and make things happen. He has a lot of freedom at the line of scrimmage. Option and a pitch. Lebron Williams, the carry. 
All right, the receivers. You talked about Gaddis and Dorsey on the outside. Bobby Brandt is the tight end. Lebron Williams averages seven yards per carry. And Dwayne Hogan is a very good fullback. Good blocker, good receiver. Indiana will throw to their backs as well. Gain of one. Second and nine. Randall L. Williams. Back to the line of scrimmage, third down and about nine. The offensive line is just about all new. Enoch DeMar is the only holdover, and he was a left guard. Craig Osika, the man in the middle, was a tight end last year, and both guards. Ohuafi and Oakley are red shirt freshmen. This is a very young front. On the other side of the ball, North Carolina State's defense, Anderson and Smith on the outside, Fisher and Bryant inside. It's a 4-3 look for North Carolina State, and they will try to emulate Florida State's defensive schemes, though obviously they don't have that personnel in place just yet. Shotgun for Randall L. On third and long, swings it out to Williams. LeBron Williams is loose. Lebron Williams is a guy who used to play wide receiver, so you know he has the speed to go the distance once he gets out on the perimeter. Flag down, 33-yard line. It is coming back. At the 33-yard line, Cam Cameron and the Indiana bench didn't see it until late. And Chuck Amato just spotted it as well. It was a very late flag well behind the procession down the sideline. Thomas Zamorski, it's an ACC crew. And Zamorski will give us the verdict. Holding against Indiana. A tough blow for Indiana to come, out, come back with the hold to, to bring this touchdown back, but they have to be happy with the movement of their offensive line. It was Anthony Oakley, number 61 there, the left guard who was able to get out and throw the big block that, that sprung Lebron Williams. It's a spot foul. So they'll actually pick up three yards from the line of scrimmage. So this makes it a third down and five. Movement and a snap. This one goes against North Carolina State. Maybe enough for the first down. Hey, do it again, Lance. Go. Let's see if we can pick up the hold, Don. Well, the call was on number 75, Ohuafi, the right guard, who should be coming in from the right side of the screen after the throw. Right there, right in the middle of the screen. Ohuafi with the push in the back. But the call was a hold. That wasn't much of a push. Or a hold, for that matter. Difficult call. A measurement coming up. The penalty marked off, a five-yard mark off. The push in the back is, is illegal within that perimeter. That's a, it's basically a, a clip if you hit a guy in the back. You're not allowed to hit him in the back whether it's below the legs or above the, above the waist. Cam Cameron didn't offer too much argument to the call, which was in front of the Indiana bench. The markoff was just short of the first down, so it's third down, less than a yard. Randall Hill straight ahead, another penalty flag is down. That's not a surprise in this ballgame, because from tight end to tackle, the offensive line of Indiana is very, very green. You have two redshirt freshmen at the guard, and Osaki, who was a tight end last year playing center, he's responsible for all the calls in the middle, and Hal Hunter, his offensive line coach, said he's also responsible for the two guards on either side of him, so he has a lot of responsibilities on his shoulders this afternoon. Greg Osika, that center, 
was a tight end last year. Offsides, and it's North Carolina State for the second snap in a row that was offside. Here's the Indiana offensive line, which was a strength last year, but Peter Elisar and Craig Robin both went to NFL camps. So you've got A.C. Myler, who was a defensive tackle. You've got Oakley and Ohuafi, who were redshirt freshmen. Osika, the tight end, and DeMar was the left guard. Randall L. straight up the middle. And Randall L. is across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Let's go to the studios and reach David. Well, Rich, things off to a start for Penn State, much like last week against Louisiana Tech in Happy Valley. This is Brian Stallworth. That's his favorite target, Sean Cangelosi, 11 yards, and the Bulldogs up by a touchdown. A-Train scores the 35th of his career. Michigan's up on Rice by seven. Johnny, you and I saw Toledo and Penn State last week, and we said, boy, Louisiana Tech will give them fits as well. Louisiana Tech has a good football team, but I think Penn State's having some internal problems. That team is not playing together. <laughs> That's an understatement. Randall L. scrambling. And outside. And there he goes. And caught Randall L. to the 33-yard line. This is going to be a lot of fun today. 22 yards on the pickup. LeVar Fisher made the stop. LeVar Fisher made the stop. And Randall L has the speed to turn away from the play and go the opposite way. You get the flow of the defense going. He sets up, he plants, and defenders just cannot contain him. He has the speed to get around, guys. You know, defensive backs take, and, and defensive linemen take an angle of pursuit. When you have a guy with Randall L's speed, he, he defies that angle. Indiana on the move. They had an 80-yard touchdown run, or actually a pass and run, called back. Randall Hunt dropped the ball, and he's inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. The rest of the North Carolina State defense, the linebackers last week combined for 44 tackles to the win over Arkansas State. Arkansas State, a Division I team out of the Big West Conference. The secondary, they'd like the corners, Brian Williams and James Walker, to operate on the island. That is, give them a mu enough man-to-man -man pressure to, so that the safeties, Adrian Wilson, Terrence Holt, and that the rest of the linebackers can blitz, blitz, blitz. And I think they'll be a little bit more conservative with their blitzing in this ball game, uh, but we'll wait to see what, how things develop for North Carolina State. Indiana, North Carolina State. Scoreless. Chuck Amato, the new head coach at North Carolina State, wants to instill the Florida State defense. That's easier said than done, Don. Much easier said than done. He doesn't have the talent that he had at Florida State. But the scheme is solid. Second down. That's Gaddis in motion. Randall L. Should have been caught. And it's incomplete. Dwayne Hogan, the fullback. Third down and seven. And these are plays they have to make with Randall L's threat to get on the exterior. Linebackers are going to rush. It's going to open up the pass game for the back. That means Hogan has to make this catch. That kind of play will be open all day. Cam Cameron, of course, the three years with the Washington Redskins, quarterback coach, 10 years an assistant at Michigan. He played both football and basketball here at Indiana. Third down, Randall L. Man open, Gaddis, and he holds on. And the 15-yard line for a first down. 15 yards on the pickup. Percy Gaddis, the senior out of Atlanta. Well, Indiana's going to give you a number of different looks. This time they put Randall L in the shotgun, and you get a chance to see the strength of his arm. He's throwing the out to the field. This is the throw that all professional coaches want to see a quarterback make is the deep out to the thrill, field. And Gaddis gets plenty of room to work on the corner. Gaddis last year with three touchdowns to go with those 35 pitches. Hogan to the 
first contact base on Corey Lyons, number 16. Cam Cameron's first year, two and nine. Second year, four and seven. Last year, four and seven, three and five. They were very, very close in a lot of games to having that season turn around to a, a seven and four or a six and five year. And it was those early games that no one thinks really count as non-conference games, and this is a very similar game that Cameron, Cameron needs today. They lost to North Carolina and Kentucky at home last year where they started the Big Ten season. Hogan, touchdown! Dwayne Hogan and Sam Cameron Hunter who had an 80-yard play called back. Stick it in on a long drive. Cam said the key to this game is going to have to run the ball in the middle. They're doing it with Randall L off the option look and also with their big fullback Hogan. Andy Got a 10-yard touchdown run. There's another flag down. Tom Zaborski's already had a busy day. Offside, decline. Indiana has a touchdown. The Hoosiers opening their season against North Carolina State. Indiana 7, North Carolina State coming to bat. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Toyota. Go for it every day. Show Walter Fountain on the campus of Indiana. In fact, in the last 24 hours, the nation is focused on this campus because of a, of a certain red sweatered basketball coach. But in Bloomington proper, Donnie, the buzz was football season. They were anxious to get this thing underway. Just talking with the players yesterday, Big Paul Mandina said he can't wait to get going. You can tell his nerves were going. And I've always heard that said that nervousness is adrenaline standing still. And with a bye week for Indiana that first week, there's a lot of adrenaline getting getting ready to get let loose here. Adam Brocker kicks it off. Ray Robinson a yard deep. Ray Robinson with a nice return out to the 32-yard line. The man quarterbacking North Carolina State is 18 years of age. A true freshman. Philip Rivers out of Athens, Alabama. Last week, all he did was throw for 397 yards. They say he doesn't play like a true freshman. His, his dad is a high school coach. He played for his dad in Alabama. He's got a tremendous amount of poise and football sense. And he's running an offense that is engineered by Norm Chow, who's the offensive coordinator. He was the offensive coordinator for Lavelle Edwards for so many years at BYU. And on the ground is Ray Robinson. And Ray Robinson is out of bounds at the 41 with a pickup of 11 yards. Sherrod Wallace made the stop. In that BYU offense, multiple sets, but they'll start with a traditional two-back, two-wide receiver. Ray Robinson was the Rookie of the Year in the ACC in 98. The man at the bottom of his list, Corin Robinson, the sophomore wide receiver, was the All-ACC Rookie last year. There's no relation between the two Robinsons? Except they're real fast, and they make lots of big plays. Rivers will put it up. He's a big kid. A little too strong for Willie Wright, who is the tight end. The offensive line for North Carolina State lost Keegan Weir, who was their center with a broken leg last week. There's youth. Green is just a sophomore, and Comer on the outside of freshman Jarvis Borum is real big and real good at the tackle spot. Indiana's look is a 4-3 look. Barnett Rasmussen on the outside, Mandina and Smith on the inside. Rivers has to fall on it. Uh, 
I hate to say it because he had such a game, such a good game last week, but that's one of those freshman mistakes. Secondary, Sharon Wallace, Orlando Spencer on the outside, Ron Bethel and Johnny Anderson are the safeties. Stop. 28 yards on the pickup. Philip Rivers, the true freshman, with a nice throw. Right away, the thing I like about Philip Rivers is he does not have happy feet. Here he is in the pocket, guys all around him. He takes his time. Nice little dump off to Ray Robinson. 6'5, 221. He's a big kid. He's a big kid. They're going to hit him often just like that. They're going to let him know he's around, try to get in his face and disrupt him a little bit. North Carolina State is on the move. Rivers, incomplete. We head to the studios and restate Rich, another young quarterback is busy again. John Navarro of Michigan against Rice, looking for Marquise Walker, and he found him six yards out. Warm up the bus for Pasadena. Wolverines up 14-0, got UCLA next week. Penn State has tied the game now. Eric Johnson along kickoff return. Eric McCoo capped it with a touchdown catch from Casey. Thanks, Reese. Indiana is very thin on that defensive line. And right now, Dominique Smith, the junior transfer out of Coffeyville Junior College, is down. Rich, you don't like to see a guy go down with an injury, but the interesting thing now is that Chris Dielman, last year starting, well, last year starting tight end, comes in at defensive tackle. And he's the guy who's playing both ways. They say he's going to play about, oh, about share of time, about 25 snaps on each side of the ball today. Defensive coordinator at Indiana. Came over from Wake Forest. His Wake Forest defense was one of the best in the country last year. Cam Cameron knew nothing about him. In fact, that's one of the selling points. Cameron wanted someone who had who he did not know that could bring something new to the program. And that's why Pell is in blooming. Rivers pass is complete. Corin Robinson made the stop. And Bell has his work cut out for him, Don. They were not a very good defensive team, Indiana, last year. One thing that's happened, though, as soon as he came here, is that this defense got fired up. When you look at the numbers that he put up at Wake Forest in improving that defense from the time he arrived in 97 to last year, this team knows he's going to simplify things and allow them to attack on defense. When one guy vacates, see Corey Robinson, Bobby Street vacates, here comes Robinson, and there's Orlando staying ground, knowing that when one guy leaves an area, another guy's coming in. Last week, North Carolina State converted on five of six fourth down opportunities. And the true freshman is going for it. Rivers, looking, throwing, and it's incomplete. Indiana holds. Indiana's doing a nice job of setting in on the short passing game, this West Coast offense. See them spread the field laterally. You see these guys running laterally. That spreads the field and doesn't allow them to go vertical on the route. You see Corey Robinson not never really sure where he's going. The ball was tipped. But it's that lateral movement by the Indiana defense. A personal foul a dead ball foul and a 15-yard markoff against North Carolina State. I'll take that. So Indiana gets the ball and 
an additional 15 yards. That young man right there is going to get a lot of different looks today from Coach Bell and the defense of Indiana. He's going to have to figure things out. He's going to make a lot of mistakes in this ball game, but he has this, all the skills to be a great quarterback. Unsportsmanlike conduct is the call against North Carolina State. And a timeout on the field. We have a look at Indiana University That's Athletic United State and other sports. Penalty that Chuck Amato likes. He's been preaching discipline, discipline to his team. He came in and made all sorts of changes. He even went into the locker room and told his players how to organize their locker team. He's a very strict disciplinary coach. Does not like those kind of calls, especially early in the football game. James Bell has to be happy with his defense's first effort. Randall Lamb. Going to throw it deep. Indiana defense is fired up. 
So is Reese Davis. At least we're, we've been told that. Right, Reese? Yes, Rich. I try to stay fired up. And the Penn State defense, uh, I don't want to speak too soon, but maybe they're trying to realign the plan. It's the State College. Fumbled by John Simon. James Boyd takes it in. Eric McCoo is followed with a touch. Here in Indiana, the Hoosiers have exploded for 14 points. Phillip Rivers, the true freshman quarterback. But North Carolina State under pressure. A nice throw with a flag down. It's caught by Eric Leak. Leak is out to the midfield stripe and into Indiana territory. It's a 24-yard gain, but the flag is back near the line of scrimmage. You heard Tom Bell talking to the defensive backs before excuse me, James Bell talking to the defensive backs before about the wheel route. When one guy leaves a zone, another guy's coming in. He wants his players to play simple. They're not going to follow people across the formation in motion. They're playing a one-gap defense. And that's going to force Phillip Rivers to find the team throwing the ball down the field. You can see a, a slight rain has begun to fall. It's a very humid day here in Indiana. About 70, 75 degrees. And the drizzle has started, which is nothing new to North Carolina State. Their double overtime win last week was played in a rainstorm. Here comes the blitz. And there goes Rivers. Justin Smith, the junior out of Indianapolis, on the blitz. This is what I'm talking about, allowing his linebackers to just shoot the gap. James Bell talked about one gap defense, allowing these guys to just pin their ears back and go. Left side of the screen, that Justin Smith right there comes clear through to the quarterback. Third down, 17. Peterson. When North Carolina State get, get opportunities, they can't afford to have drop football. The offensive line is doing a nice job of protecting Rivers, who is seeing the field fairly well right now, dumps the ball off, and not have this kind of drop for Peterson. Austin Herbert. Gets it away. Indiana will have great field position and they put it into play. The Hoosiers are off to a good start. So is their D coordinator, Tim Bell. Many people felt that if Indiana could play some defense this year, they would have some success. And I think the Indiana fans are more fired up over the defense than they are of Antoine Randall out. There's your temperature. 76, very humid, and the rain has begun to fall. But the loudest ovation, Donnie, was for the defense. They didn't have a whole lot of it here last year. Hogan to midfield. The first player in Big Ten history in his first two years to amass over 5,000 yards of total offense. Before he's done, he's just a junior. I think Randall L. He may get to 10,000. His, his numbers will continue to improve, and for one simple reason, he knows he can do things with his legs and with his arms. He's starting to do things now, reading defense, being a smart quarterback. in the area. Of course, he was inside the tackle box. And Rich, that's what I mean about him being a smart quarterback. Green, excuse me, White had a, a beeline to him. He knew he didn't have the screen. Just throw the ball away. Buddy Green, defensive coordinator at North Carolina State. A job in which he had in the early 90s. Then he went on to coach at University of Tennessee Chattanooga. He played at North Carolina State for Lou Holtz, his position coach. 
Chuck Amato. No coincidence, he's back. Third down. Flag down, Randall L. Off the hands of Percy Gaddis. That flag is in the area of a hole, and I think that's something we're going to see a lot of today. Looking at the offensive line for Indiana, you have players playing in different positions. Sika was a tight end last, last year, now a center, and let's get the call. The procedure and holding. Sam Cameron has donned the jacket with the rain increasing here. That's a, that's a double negative for a offensive line, a procedure and a hold. You have A.C. Myla at the left tackle. Here's a guy who was a defensive tackle last year. Defensive tackles put their hands in the dirt. They lean hard. They're used to hitting, making contact first. Now he has to receive the contact as, a, as an offensive tackle. It's a big adjustment for this line for Indiana. North Carolina State declines the penalty. What does the rain do to this football game for either side? Well, I think the rain becomes an advantage almost for Indiana because, first of all, they have the lead now. And Randall L. knows where he's going before defense is doing. So he has the ability to make cuts. It's very difficult to react to on a wet surface. Andy Payne, who is doubling as a punter this year, is a fine place kicker. And he gets that one to roll inside the 20. It'll look good on the stat sheet. 32 yards on the kick. Sunday Night Football on ESPN, the Cowboys and the Cardinals, Emmett Smith and Jake Plummer. It all begins with NFL primetime at 7.30 Eastern. That's tomorrow. And then ABC's Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern. New England and New York, Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots, Vinny Testaverde and the Jets. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home for NFL primetime football. Phillip Rivers swings it out. Ray Robinson, and Ray Robinson, the junior out of Hilton Head, South Carolina, from Rivers. They need to get Robinson the football. I like what they're doing with Rivers, getting him, getting him to get rid of the football very quickly, get it on the perimeter. But the one thing you have to be impressed with is your left tackle here, Jarvis Borum, right there, right out in front. That man is 323 pounds. Tim Kenning, that's why he slides and falls on his butt, because it's, it's hard to stop 323 when you get it going. He was a lot bigger than that when things started last year. Shotgun and a fumbled snap. And North Carolina State recovered. Let's go to the studios, Reese Davis. Reese? All right, Rich, Alabama and Vanderbilt, the Tide trying to bounce back after that loss to UCLA last week. Ahmad Galloway named the starter at tailback, and that appears to be a pretty good decision. Excellent downfield blocking, and then there's no one to block. 79 yards, he takes it to the house, and the Tide's on top, 7-0. And the nation's longest winning streak, 18. Marshall had a 7-0 lead. The Spartans have tied it on ESPN. Well, we saw the back flexed muscles last week with Toledo. Marshall trying to do the same in the Big Ten. Derek Roberts, the fullback. Orlando Spencer made the stop. And North Carolina State's offense is starting to click, Don McPherson. When you think of the old BYU and Norm Chow and that offense, you know the quarterbacks like to throw the football. You think of some great wide receivers that they've had, but they also do a nice job of getting the football to their running back. And that time, in space, Roberts, the fullback, Gets a chance to move the football, not from the backfield, but from the secondary. Third down two. Peterson in motion. Robinson, nice cut. Flags go down as Robinson dives across to get the first down. And it's a hold against North Carolina State. He's in a sloppy game on both sides. Has, there have been a lot of changes with both these ball clubs with new coaches coming in, new systems, new ideas, players changing positions. Holding against North Carolina State. Spot foul. Whenever you have those kinds of wholesale changes with the ball club, 
lot of adjustments. You don't see these mistakes early on in the season. And North Carolina State, remember, the team did not have a head coach for a few months after Michael Kane was fired before Chuck Amato was hired. And this certainly changes the play call for Norm Chow from third down and about two to third down and 15. When we talked to Chuck Amato this week, one of the things he said was in reference to taking over for Michael Kane. He said, the one thing I want to say is I felt Michael Kane and his staff did a very good job. That sometimes when a new coach comes in, a university or a program will commit more resources just simply because you have a new coach. He said, I thought Michael Kane, and I think he was speaking more of an alumnus because he played at North Carolina State. He was part of the, the success there. He was very quick to point out that he, he felt Michael Kane did a nice job. There's a lot of coaches and a lot of programs that when you take over, you immediately say, well, we're going to do things differently around here because of this or that or however. And uh, Amato was very quick to point out he felt that Michael Kane did a nice job at North Carolina State. And it was Michael Kane who originally went out and started recruiting Philip Rivers, who was in Alabama, the player of the year last year in high school, and chose to, to talk with Michael Kane about coming to North Carolina State. And as soon as Amato got the job, the first thing he did was go see Philip Rivers. And then hired Norm Chow. And I'm sure that made Philip Rivers' life <laughs> That's exactly a, right. a lot nicer. People in the state of Alabama are not happy at Auburn, Alabama, that Philip Rivers chose North Carolina State over those hometown powerhouse high school player in the state of Alabama and the confusion right now has got to be where they mark that that penalty because they're taking the ball back to the original line of scrimmage there were the the high school numbers and he finished high school in December and enrolled at North Carolina State so he could participate in spring practice. And had a tremendous spring practice for North Carolina State. In fact, obviously was slated as the number one quarterback midway through camp. And the thing that Chuck Amato liked about him the most, other than his intelligence, which you can see so far, is that he's a tough player. He actually hurt his and broke his a finger during spring ball and took 50 more snaps with a broken finger before he told anyone that it was broken. And that's the kind of player that Chuck Amato likes, a tough guy who's going to play every down. They're enforcing the penalty from the previous spot, not the spot of foul. So instead of third down and 15, it's third down and 12. You can see the penalties are already mounting for North Carolina State. So on third and long, the 18-year-old quarterback is hit hard. And it's incomplete. Paul Mandina, the senior out of Rochester, New York, introduced Philip Rivers to the Big Ten. Mandina's a co-captain and the guy who gets it going for this defense. He's the veteran who's been around here a long time. He likes this one gap defense. He likes the ability to rev it up and go directly at the quarterback. And that's Paul Mandina saying, welcome to the Big Ten. Darren Graham, Derek Roberts made the stop for North Carolina State. 45 yards on the punt. Darren Graham's the guy who gives them a little more depth at the wide up position behind the Adams and Dorsey. The two guys have been very productive. Graham gives you a little bit more depth at that position. So far, Antoine Randall-L has taken every snap at the quarterback spot. Tommy Jones is scheduled to get in to the ball game. The sophomore. Randall L. Incomplete. Aaron Holterman, the tight end, was the intended receiver, and Randall L. was hit. And Oakley, one of those red, red shirt freshmen we talked about 
on this offensive line for Indiana. A tough little challenge for these guys to play against a, a pretty good defensive front by North Carolina State. They're a little unproven. But they some big physical guys up front. On second down. North Carolina State has the football. George Anderson fell on it. Running the option is dangerous. Running the option when it's wet can be especially dangerous. It can be especially dangerous, but this is something that, that quarterbacks who run the option have to work on is running the option in the wet. This can't be a factor, a factor in running the option. Randall will have that ball in his right hand, switched it to his left before he made the pitch. That's a problem because he doesn't get a good grip on the football. He had it in his right hand, went to his left to make the pitch. And the Wolfpack have a nice opportunity at the Indiana 13-yard line. First and 10, River. Ray Robinson goes down. Footing getting a bit treacherous. Derek Barnett made the stop. We saw the same problem here last year against Michigan. When this field gets a little bit slick, it is tough footing, tough to go on. Taking a walk out there yesterday, the grass is a little thick, a little high. So even a light, a slight little miss like that with the long spike makes it difficult to get through. Rivers gets it back. That young man, that's going to be something that starts to stick into the back of his mind of when the freshman mistakes start to happen. When that ball falls directly under the center, you know it's the quarterback's fault. If you see a fumble snap scored out to the right or the left, then you know it's the center because it's taking off too soon. That time the ball drops straight down, it's on the quarterback. North Carolina State, one of four on third down today. A third down and 14. Rivers throw. And his intended receiver, Willie Wright, went down in the end zone. And it looked like he slipped. Willie Wright had to kick, he could just keep his feet on his last play. Looks like the kid who just did not play last week. One of the more talented tight ends. Finally get a chance to start. Kent Passingham. From 35. Last week he made a 33-yarder and missed a 30-yarder. And this week he is true for 35 in North Carolina State. On an Indiana turnover, has three points. A light rain falling in Indy. Passingham and North Carolina State on the board. 14-3, Indiana on top of North Carolina State. Rich Waltz along with Don McPherson from Memorial Stadium. Hoosier fans. Look at that guy. <laughs> Football is back, baby. <laughs> North Carolina State on the board, but struggling right now offensively. Darren Graham. Indiana gets it at their own 20-yard line. This Wolfpack offense is not going many places right now. In fact, it's in its last couple of drives, Donnie, has, has gone backward. Lost four yards on that drive and actually came out of it with three points. And what Indiana, the Indiana defense is going to do to North Carolina State is give them the same look. But Rivers is going to have to make the action read. That's what's going to make the difference. On first and ten, Randall L. He pitched it. Hey. 
As fun and as creative as that is, it's also dangerous. I think Indiana's being a little careless with the football right now. Brian Lewis took the pitch. We well, saw on the, on the fumble on the pitch the last time, Randall L switching hands with the ball. Watch him switch hands with the football. It's in his right hand now. He tucks it away, goes to his left hand, and then gives it up with his left hand. That's a very dangerous ball handling, not to mention the fact that he pitched the ball after making contact on the option. That's an option no no. Secondary and the linebackers for North Carolina State start to get a little bit of time, a little bit tired as this game wears on because Randall Ellen is going to stretch them horizontally and they are going to try to come up the field to contain him. One corner in the book. Some around Bloomington Field. This could be the year that the Hoosiers turn the corner. Antoine Randall L. And the Hoosiers are off to a good start. They have a 14 3 lead. Indiana 14, North Carolina State 3. Second quarter underway. Antoine Randall L. Movement and flag. There's no question what happened there. You have two guys from Indiana go offside. The board of snap. All start. Against the offense. Five yards. Still third down. Let's find Holly Rowe. Holly? Guys, you've seen some slipping here by both teams. The field is getting very slippery. It rained all night here last night. It has rained steadily throughout the first quarter. That plus the very high humidity making for difficult conditions. Antoine Randall coming off after almost every play to wipe his hands on a towel, keep his hands dry. All right, thanks, Holly. On third down at six. to the first down. Adrian Wilson on the stop. The all-important spot. Randall L was so much faster than the rest of the backfield. On that play, he just outran the option relationship. It's the, it's the running back's responsibility to keep the pitch relationship with the quarterback, but they can't keep up with Randall L. He just out-sprinted his backfield to the perimeter. Randall L, no, with no run fake, Randall L is just a sprint to the perimeter. You see him look back for his back there, but the pitch relationship wasn't there, so he had to keep it himself. Randall L. In trouble. And going down. Adrian Wilson again. The junior out of High Point, North Carolina. You can see the numbers. North Carolina State's yardage came early. Indiana's been very well balanced. And remember, Indiana had an 80-yard touchdown pass called back on a short throw and a run by LeBron Williams. And that's the balance provided by Randall Hell, the ability to run the, run the football. Mercy Gaddis in motion. Randall Hell going deep again. He is as good as 
is advertised. Terrence Holt, the sophomore safety, getting a lecture right now from Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator. And Mercy Gannon. How you do that? Finishes off an 80-yard drive. Big plays for Indiana. Jerry Dorsey caught a 57-yard touchdown. And Gannon with a 70-yard score. about it, changed his mind, and then thought better of it. And he stays in the end zone, it comes out to the 20. Rich, two things happen. Here's Mercy Gash right here. He's gonna be a one-on-one -on -one coverage. Well, when the play goes, he comes clear across the field, and then you have linebackers blowing and opening up the vision for Antoine Randall L, who just puts the ball out there and lets Gash run to it. thing we love about doing these games in Indiana is watching Randall L not just on the field but in practice he's a guy who just loves to play the game football. Short throw by Phillip Rivers. How do you get the confidence back of this 18-year-old quarterback? With plays exactly like that. You give him a short passing game, allow him to get back, set his feet. Don't worry about trying to get the ball down the field. Let him throw with a quick slant, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Give him some room to show his strong arm. Hey, back at the crib. <laughs> grandma, grandpa, grandfather, grandma, hope all y'all made it. My granddaddy, hope y'all made it, man. Like I said, he's like the best one playing this game. Rivers, and a quick throw. Willie Wright, the intended receiver. And he makes the catch right on the stick. Robert Brown on the coverage for Indiana. And that doesn't look like much, but that gets you right to the stick. Now it's third and short. It gives your quarterback who likes to throw the football a chance to complete another pass. NC State is one of five on third down today. Rivers has enough. Quarterback, Dallas Rivers, number 17. North Carolina State, of course, you had Jamie Barnett in the quarterback spot for a long time. Rivers steps onto campus in January. Suddenly, he's the man. Wolfpack were 6-6 six six last year. Finished the season with two losses. North Carolina and East Carolina. Rivers, another short throw. Will he run? Another right. Willie really Wright gets, gets the start this week and does a good job of settling down in the hole, reading the, the, the man coverage. He's got man coverage right in the middle of your screen, sits down right in that hole. Quick throw and another hookup with Willie Wright. 
Johnny Anderson made the hit. And the Wolfpack moving the football right now. And the Indiana defense is a one-gap defense. A lot of base looks. So Rivers knows where people are going to be, and that's why you see his tight end, Willie Wright, getting so many catches in the middle because they can spread the field with linebackers playing in that zone defense. There are a lot of seams for him to throw into. about Philip Rivers having to make action reads. What exactly is an action read? Well, when the quarterback breaks the hollow, he checks out the defense. He knows where the free safety is. He knows where his inside linebacker is. Then he gets a, it's called a free snap read before the snap of the ball. What happens after the snap of the football, where linebackers shift to, how the secondary rotate, that's the action read that he has to, that he has to watch. For. Ray Robinson to the 21-yard line. Norm Chow, for 22 years, was the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach at BYU. You can see him right behind the hand there. Here's a look at Norm. And last year, Lavelle Edwards told him that he was going to resign. He just told Norm. And Norm, sensing that if Lavelle Edwards were to leave BYU, Norm might not be welcome. Figured he would go out and find himself a job. And he's now the offensive coordinator at North Carolina State. Third down. A catch at the 15-yard line by Corin Robinson, Johnny Anderson on the coverage. Norm Chow, who's whose offenses and his work with quarterbacks at Brigham Young, well documented. He was voted in by one publication as the assistant coach of the year last year in college football. He's very excited about getting into the ACC and installing this offense in this program. James Bell, the defensive coordinator for Indiana. First down. Quick throw. And Robinson can't hold it. Flags are down. Rich, you ask how you get your young quarterback some confidence. They're doing exactly that. A lot of short throws, a lot of quick slants, and short throws over the middle. A hold against Indiana. Defensive holding against Indiana is the indication. Cam Cameron's Hoosiers had a bundle of big plays on the offensive side of the ball. The defense has played well. Right now, North Carolina State moving the football. And this has this been the difference for Indiana. Against the defense, automatic first down, spot foul. Is giving up too many points. Obviously, their offense is high potent last year giving up too many points, and down here, down by the goal line, is when they have to show their character. Let's go the stage. Ray Robinson to the seven-yard line. Holly Rowe, what's up? Guys, this Phillip Rivers is something special. I have never seen such a young quarterback with such amazing composure. He's coming over to the sideline and yelling at his coaches because they're not getting the plays in quick enough. He's got a big smile on his face. He's so eager to get into the huddle. He's got an unbelievable attitude out there. And Chuck Amato and Norm Chow both told us this week. This is no, this is no normal 18-year-old. Rivers looking and scrambling out of bounds. And gets inside the five to the four-yard line. Joe Gonzalez made the stop. Third down and goal. And Rivers doing a, a good job with his feet on this particular play. It's not what he's known for. Rasmussen had a, a beeline at him. And then Medina. Oh, Rasmussen is a real intense defensive lineman. 11 plays on the drive. Third and goal. 
Inside screen, Corey Robinson. That play blows up for a loss of 10. Justin Smith. North Carolina State's going to have to settle for a shot at three points. It's just a terrible play that I don't like. and never liked as a quarterback with that kind of screen where you have your receiver coming back in towards the quarterback, especially down by the goal line. Everything's so tight down, down in there. Not too many places for him to, him to run. Passing him will hit from 35 yard attack. 32 yards on this run. Whoa! And it hit the upright and went through. There's a flag down. An inadvertent flag. Cam Cameron and the Hoosiers on top. His defense playing pretty well today. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by cold, refreshing Zima. Zima, a few degrees cooler. And by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Back on the campus of Indiana, where the Hoosiers lead the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Texas Chris Sims got the start against Louisiana Lafayette. Cajuns held the ball about half the first quarter, didn't let him see it for a while, and when he did, good things did not happen. He changed that uniform number to one, and there's interception number one on the season. Terrence Hunter's going to take it the other way. Don't know if it's by design or not, but Applewhite came in after that, and he has Texas deep in Lafayette territory. Alabama's Texas field goal on to its lead over Vandy. North Carolina State out of the ACC moving the football. 14 play, 66 yard drive. And now Tommy Jones is in a quarterback. And down goes Jones. Antoine Randall L was a wide receiver. But the play never got off the launching pad. Jones scheduled to take the snaps, and he's on his way to the sideline. And Randall L. He is going to apparently go back to the quarterback spot. And Rich, that's enough. That's enough right there for the rest of the Big Ten and every other opponent that Indiana plays. Now they have to watch that play on the film and prepare for Randall L going somewhere else. Dwayne Hogan. But I'll tell you one thing, Duncan. It is not enough for Tommy Jones. Because Cam Cameron told us yesterday. You have to have two quarterbacks prepared to play. And right now, I don't think that Tommy Jones is prepared to play. He has not had much game time at all. And here comes Tommy Jones again. And Randall L. Both come into the, into, the, into the huddle. And you're exactly right. Tommy Jones has to be able to get a rhythm and start to feel like a quarterback. And right now, defensive coordinators all around the Big Ten are cruising. Mr. L in motion. <laughs> How about that? LeBron Williams on the pitch. Jones to Randall L to William. <laughs> you got to love it. And Cam is a little stork right there. Randall L is going to come in motion across. Here he is right here on the right side. He's going to come in motion across the pattern. Jones just turns on the snap of the ball and gives it to him, and there's that pitch relationship I talked about earlier. Well-designed play and, and well-executed. Jones is out. L is in. Randall L. And that one went nowhere. LeBron Williams stopped. 
for about four yards. All right, John, say you're Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator for North Carolina State. How do you adjust when Jones comes in the game? You know, I really wouldn't make too much of a big deal about it. When we talked to Buddy Green, he said he's going to have all 11 guys looking for Randall L. I would just tell my defense to play as if Randall L is just a very good wide receiver in the slot. I wouldn't get too complicated, especially when you're playing with a young team. They basic, treat Randall L just like any other player. Percy Cannon. Reverse. Henry Frazier. North Carolina State did a nice job of defending that. Corey Lyons of the Wolfpack made the stop. And Randall L does everything for this team, not just taking the ball as a receiver, but peels back and gets a block. Nice hit, nice cut block by Randall Elf. He'll be able to stand so a popcorn in the second half. Flag down at the 35-yard line. Sideline warning against the offense. So there is a danger in all this excitement that Randall L provides at the quarterback position and also has at another position is that you're asking him to do too many things. One of the things that I was told so much as a quarterback, as a young quarterback, by my coach Dick McPherson was to play within yourself. Don't try to do too many things. Don't try to make big plays happen all the time. Play within yourself to recognize you have 10 other players on the field who are all good football players. Third down. And 13. Randall L to the 38-yard line. Sean Locklear, the freshman of Lumberton, North Carolina, hit on the stop. And that's got to be a real confidence booster for this young North Carolina State defense. So the question has been answered. Randall L has taken some snaps at a position other than quarterback. Andy Penn has his kick blocked. North Carolina State blocks a kick. Brian Williams got through. The Wolf Pack showing signs of life. No get it. Great field position. Indiana 21, North Carolina State 6. However, the Wolf Pack have just blocked a punt and have the football at the Hoosier 32 yard line. Phillip Rivers throws it short. He was looking for Willie Ryan. Coming up at 3.30, more college football on ABC. Number four, Miami. And number 15, Washington. Oregon. And number five, Wisconsin. Or Missouri and number 19, Clemson. Check your local listings for the game in your area. You can get all the games on pay-per-view by calling your local cable or satellite company. Second down, 10. Rivers, and this time he connects for a first down for Corin Robinson. 18 yards. Johnny Andrews, the number 13. Holly, the Holly Rowe talked about Rivers, is, his, his wanting to get the play in early so he can see the defense. See Justin Smith come in on the blitz. Rivers knows that area is vacated. There it comes Corin Robinson right into that vacated area. And the Hoosier 14. Rivers. A nice slide. The ball going down the on his own. Very for close to a first down. Rivers. Justin Smith made this stop. He is playing. Nice like game quarterback. Game. So many ways. That particular play, he knew right away. He didn't have to go through his progression. The middle was wide open. Get in, hook slide. 
give yourself a chance at another play. Chuck Amato, game two of his head coaching career. Double overtime win last week. Down he goes! Justin Smith. <laughs> Second sack for the Hoosiers. James Bell, one, talked about his one gap defense. Simplify it, allow his linebackers to shoot the gap. Justin Smith shoots it. Anytime you see a linebacker get in the backfield that quick, he's splitting the gap. One gap defense, Justin Smith had a good jump on the football. Shotgun on third down. Rivers is caught. Roberts, the fullback, up and over. And the Wolfpack are in the end zone for the first time today. How about that for an 18-year-old? He's not getting excited at all. He's still looking, what are we going to do next? Are we going for two? He's kept his head in the ball game every snap. Number 26, and to attempt the point after. Bobby Moore will hold. Passing him for the point. And he hits it. A blocked punt and then a nice little drive. And North Carolina State is within eight. Up and over goes Roberts. 21-13, Indiana on top of a resurgent North Carolina State team. Don McPherson, as we look at the possession, you see the two field goals and the touchdown. Indiana's defense hasn't played poorly. A blocked punt led to that touchdown. The fumble by Randall L led to the first field goal. That's 10 points. Darren Graham. For the 26th. Let's go to the studios, Reese Davis. All right, Rich, coming up on the Buick Halftime Report, the nation's longest winning streak is on the line in East Lansing. Marshall and Michigan State going at it. Also, we'll take you out to Seattle to see how things are setting up for the Miami-Washington game and the game day crew in South Bend for Nebraska and Notre Dame. Plus, you'll get Coach and Rod's take on all of those games on the Buick Halftime Report. All right, here in Indiana, 21-13, Indiana on top. Antoine Randall on the Hoosiers. They had some big plays. Not this time, though. Lamar Fisher, the junior, made a nice hit. And North Carolina State's playing with some emotion. Coach Amato said Lamar Fisher's motor goes 100 miles an hour on every play. He's an Amato type player. You see his feet? Nice, strong feet. Good upper body, get the hit in the backfield, and then the celebration, get his team going. They need to start turning the defense around, get a little bit excited, They've given up some big plays. And the ball fish is gonna be a key. State has two timeouts left. If they hold here, they get the football back with the momentum and about a minute left. And the key for North Carolina State was that 14-play drive they had two possessions ago when they started to get some rhythm with their quarterback, Rivers. If they can get the ball back here, I would see them going for another sustained drive, even in a short period of time, trying to get some more points on the field. Three of five on third down. This is a long one, third down and nine. Short of the first down. LeVar Fisher made the stop. Rich, as Indiana progresses through their Big Ten schedule, they're not going to be able, they're not going to survive if Antoine Randall L has to keep taking these types of hits and run the football the way he's been running. They're relying way too much on his running. While they're measuring, let's go down to Holly Rowe. Holly? Guys, I'm standing by with 
Peter Schmidt, former coach and still active coach here on the staff. You're still kicking. Still coaching and helping what I can. You're suffering from cancer right now. You have a tough fight on your hands, but this team and the staff has really rallied around you in your fight. They really have. They've been very supportive and uh, with Cam, all the coaches and players, and it's, it's really helped me a lot. And I try to contribute a little bit, whatever little I can, but you know, I'm in a battle and just battling away here and really miss being on the field coaching, but uh, you're agonizing with every little snap of the ball here. Killing me down here. But uh, it's, uh, you know, I've got about four more weeks of treatment to go, and hopefully uh, we can take care of some You said that Antoine Mazzuel is a very special young man, and he's been very touched by your battle. Talk about your relationship. Well, obviously very close, but he is really the finest character young man I've ever coached, and uh, he's just a fantastic person and a fantastic player. And uh, I really miss working with him on a daily basis. But uh, he's been, uh, he contacts me every day and calls me and checks in. So we're very close. And I, I just miss coaching. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you on the sideline next time we're here, okay? Thank you very much. Pete Schmidt, Ken Cameron's assistant head coach, diagnosed with lymphoma last year. Cameron and uh, Obviously, everybody in the Indiana family battling with Pete Schmidt is undergoing right now an extensive chemotherapy, which is scheduled to end in November. There aren't many nicer guys in this business than Pete Schmidt, and talking to Coach Cameron, he just talked about how tough he is in this battle. Most coaches spend the summer visiting other programs and such, but Cam Cameron spent this summer with Pete Schmidt. In fact, Cameron, when it was apparent that Schmidt would not be able to be an active coach this fall, brought his, his stepfather onto the staff. Tom Harp joined the staff later. Former head coach at Indiana State, Duke Cornell. We'll see what happens off the timeout on first and ten. Randall L. to put it up. Flags are down. And Randall L. airs it out. <laughs> we'll wait on the flag. Illegal formation against the offense. There's a look at Tom Hart. Cameron had told us that that man had obvious influence on his football career, coaching career. Antoine Randall told us as well yesterday that just watching the battle that Pete Schmidt is in right now has been a tremendous inspiration to the team and to him personally. Movement, and you can see the initial movement by Brian Jamison, number 20. Now the rule this year, Don, is a new one in college football. If a defense moves and the officials feel that their movement, let's listen. Defense is trying to draw the offsides into a false start. Five yard penalty, remain first down. Well, heck, Tom Zamorski said it a lot better than I was going to, so that's the new rule. The defense cannot move in an effort to draw the offense offsides. And Rich, what that means is that they can't do anything that doesn't look like they're going for the play. In other words, they can't raise their hand to scratch their helmet or to point somewhere in the back of the backfield. That would be considered drawing the, the other team offside with an unnatural movement. Randall L's throw is incomplete. Incomplete pass. Brian Williams on the coverage. For number two. Our view and halftime report is coming up with Reese Davis, Coach John McAvitt, and the esteemed Rodney Gilmore. 21-13, Indiana on top of North Carolina State. 
You know, one thing North Carolina State learned about that rule last week, Don, is that the dead ball foul. North Carolina State lined up to kick a field goal on fourth down and seven, and they made the field goal. So Arkansas State moved, flags came down, they took the field goal off the board, they tend to kick it over, and the kick was blocked. North Carolina State did not have an opportunity to accept or decline the penalty. The new wrinkle. Randall L. Wolfpack have done a nice job of keeping him in check. Two timeouts left for Indiana. You know, I said earlier that the wet surface would be an advantage to Randall L, but they're asking him to do so much, and he's having to make so many moves that he's starting to lose his footing himself. Later today on ESPN, the Bell Canadian Open. Tiger Woods trying to become the first player since Lee Trevino to win the British, the U.S., and the Canadian. Four shots back. He was at 65 yesterday. Today and tomorrow, 5 Eastern on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Here in Indiana on a very humid afternoon, we've had some rain. We've had some big plays. And we've seen a very young North Carolina State team rally. Down 21-3. They played with emotion on defense. And with a little more continuity on their offense. Camp Cameron faced with third down. And 11. Hoosiers can stop the clock one more time. Dwayne Hogan and Jeremy Johnson. And that time it was Jeremy Johnson, number one, who sprung Williams and got him into the secondary where his speed takes over. Andy Payne is the extra point. He's one of the tallest running backs you'll find in the country at 6'4", 221 pounds. There's Jeremy Johnson, the fullback. You'll see him come out and make the kickout block right here on the defensive, on the cornerback. That allows William that seam. And then you talk about his height, his height, but he's also very fast. Once he gets into the secondary, he's used to running the football like a wideout. When's the last time you saw a running back that tall? Well, he, he looks a little bit like Eddie George. He has the same type of height as Eddie George. He's not as built as Eddie George, but for a tailback, that gives him the vision to see the secondary and know where to make those cuts. Something you don't see very much from a running back. 6'4", 221, and Anthony Thompson, the Indiana assistant head coach and also one of the great running backs here at Indiana, wants him to run with his shoulders low. He stands so tall that he makes it an easy target for defensive backs. But they're teaching him to, to run with his shoulders a little bit lower. He's just a junior out of Evansville. The skill positions at Indiana are very, very experienced. Gaddis, Dorsey, the receivers, William Hogan, Randall L. You see the scoring drive. That Randall L. scramble was a big play, and Williams finished it. But the offensive line, from tight end to tackle, is virtually brand new. Dribbler. 
yard line. And the first half is over. From Indiana, the Hoosiers lead the Wolf Pack 28-13 to the studio. All right, Rich, took a while to get that first half done, but it was an entertaining one. Uh, Indiana jumped out to that lead, Ron. It looks as if they had the game under control and the State sort of rallied back. Yeah, they really did. I, I thought that really that North Carolina State showed a sense of urgency until that last drive, and North Carolina State kind of let it get away from them a little bit at the end. But if they play with the same resiliency in the second half, you know, I think they'll be okay. Coach Mack, uh, what up? What do you think, Matt? Wait a minute. You can call me... Coach, <laughs> you can call me Mister, but don't call me right, Matt. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me tell you about Indiana's <laughs> offense and what's really good about it, and that's the fact that Antoine Randall is the man you have to stop all the time. This last play by Leveron Williams, where he came down the line, they forced the pitch out, and he went for the touchdowns. A significant play because you have to be able to cover everybody to make an offense work, and this will be important for Indiana as they go into the Big Ten. I was a witness to that whole thing, so uh, I'll be having a press conference later on to let everybody know what happened. Also coming up on the Buick Halftime Report, we're just moments away from getting a couple of the big games started. Miami out in Seattle to take on Washington, and of course, it'll be Marcus Tuiasosopo battling Eric Krause for a little Heisman attention as Nebraska takes on Notre Dame. That's all coming up on the Buick Halftime Report as we look ahead. Stay with us. This halftime report is presented by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Glad to have you with us on the Buick Halftime Report. The nation's longest winning streak, Marshall and East Lansing to take on Michigan State and the Spartans. New quarterback Ryan Van Dyke. Somebody lost a headgear in there. Chris Baker, 37 yards, and the Spartans on top, 7-0. Same score in the first. Rod Byron left with to Nate Poole. Hey, you got a fine pool. This time they leave him wide open. He's the number one receiver. Somebody's got to know where he is, Reese. 18 games in a row, Marshall has won, and they certainly haven't won them of being scared. Leveling, Ryan Van Dyke, he left the game with an injured right thumb. The highly touted freshman, Jeff Smoker, came into the game for the Spartans, and they're at the half over on ESPN, tied at 10. One of the things about college football, different from college basketball, is great players leave every year, and new ones just step right up and play. Louisiana Tech and Penn State. Richard Casey gave it up on a fumble. La Tech, Brian Stallworth, Deshaun Cangelosi. Remember, those two hooked up to beat Alabama last year. And the Bulldogs on top of Jopa, 7-0. But on the following kickoff, the outspoken Larry Johnson, John. Well, they say you have to walk the talk, and he's doing it here. One of the things that he did is he outran his blockers and just decided to take off down the field, but with great speed, he almost breaks this all the way. Well, he said he, was, he expected bad things in the offensive line. It might extend to the special team, too. But here's some good things for the Penn State defense. James Boyd scooping up a fumble, taking it the other way. Penn State had a lead. And boy, Rod, it looks as if order is being restored in Happy Valley at least for one week. And it started up front, the offensive line playing much better today. Eric McCoo, 132 yards, and even Johnson picking up yardage. 43 points after having 11 in the first two games combined. Michigan's had no trouble on offense, taking on right first quarter. Here's the A-train. Hop aboard. I think it's go ahead. Time to go ahead and load up the bus for Pasadena. Michigan's got UCLA next week. That was Thomas' second TD of the quarter. They were up 21-0 at that point. They are up 35-0. Halftime in the big house. Navarre with three touchdown passes again after four in his debut last week. Two of those going to Marquise Walker. Well, a little bit later on this afternoon, it'll be Miami and Washington. You know the pac tens already undefeated in non-conference play. Among those victories, a win over a top-five team. Washington will try to duplicate UCLA's feet by taking it to Miami. Calling the action on ABC for us will be Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. Guys? Bob, the last time these two teams got together, 1994, and they ended up calling it the Whammy in Miami as the Huskies <laughs> stopped a 58-game home winning streak for the Hurricanes. Now it's the Hurricanes going on the road really the first big test for them. Well, and this team has uh, gone through a metamorphosis. Uh, back then in 94, Miami was darn good. Uh, Butch Davis came in in 95. Sanctions, uh, they were down, and now they are back. And this is really the first big game for the Hurricanes on the road and for their quarterback, Ken Dorsey. Dorsey has started five games. This will be his fifth start and his first start on the road. But uh, I'm very impressed with him. He is smart. He's intelligent. Everybody says he looks like Bernie Kosar. Uh, he might be better than Bernie, but if I was going to be the Washington Huskies, this is the time I'd like to have him early in his career. Well, the 
coaches right now are starting to talk in the same vein as Bernie Kosar, saying he knows what the <laughs> coaches know, and he knows what the defense knows. He's already changing things at the line. And he's got a little bit of an attitude, which is good for quarterbacks. they got some confidence. They know what they're doing. So uh, he's talking about out of practice is, hey, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? That shows me some, uh, some, uh, some finesse and some improvement. Well, some improvement at quarterback for the Washington Huskies would be hard-pressed to accomplish because Marcus Cuyas de Sopo is one of the best in the country. Rick Neuheisel knows that. And today it's the Huskies with their home crowd and maybe weather conditions <laughs> against the number four team in the country. And that new field turf out there that they're hoping will slow things down for Miami. You can see that game on ABC 3.30 Eastern Time, also part of the regional coverage. Missouri and Justin Smith trying to blow up Tommy Bowden's offense at Clemson. What a week Woody Danzler had last week, 16 of 17. And Oregon and Wisconsin, who's going to sit out for the Badgers? They still have 20-plus suspensions to take care of, so we'll find out at kickoff exactly who Barry Alvarez decides to sit. Let's get back to that Miami-Washington game. And, guys, so much talk about speed, speed, speed. Well, Washington has a guy that's faster than all of them. Unfortunately, he's in Sydney, Jawar and Hooker, so he's not going to be able to help today. Yeah, it makes you wonder, really, what Washington is going to do offensively. They really need some help. Hooker isn't there. Their wide receiver core is down. They lost Chris Juergens as well. So who's going to step up to help Tuiasa Sopo? Maybe Todd Elstrom will have to catch more balls. So Paul Arnold in the backfield has got to make some big plays because that Miami defense, Mr. Makovic, is very fast. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gilmore, very much. And plays right into the hands of Miami in their defense. Up front, they're a little shaky because they, they don't have all the players that they counted on, but that secondary is as tough as anybody. I see them playing bump and run coverage on the wide receivers. That allows the safeties to come up and really get into the run support game on Arnold and Tuiasa Sopo for the option play. So their secondary has covered Santana Moss and their guys during the year. But uh, they, they can run with them, and they can also come up and kill. And Neuheisel complained a bit that Paul Arnold looked a little tentative in the opening game against Idaho, and he also says his team must play faster if they're going to match up with Miami. I, I think there's another game this afternoon. Oh, yeah, Nebraska and Notre Dame. Dan Alexander and the Big Red thrashing machine rolling into South Bend. Our college game day crew is there. We'll go out to Chris, Kirk, and the coach and hear from them after this. And welcome back to our College Football Today studios to view a halftime report. Indiana leading North Carolina State by a couple of touchdowns at the break. Well, Nebraska and Notre Dame going at it this afternoon. And not to say that the Huskers don't respect that rich Irish tradition, but Carlos Holt said, as far as I know, touchdown Jesus is a Nebraska fan. Well, we'll find out a little bit later on this afternoon. Nobody has knocked off number one more times than Notre Dame eight times, but number nine, would figure to be a very tall order. Our college game day crew out in South Bend, Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herb Street. Chris? The Huskers are in the house. They'll feel like it's a home game until they get inside the stadium, but lots of red and white here in South Bend. They've made the migration eastward to be a part of this big happening, this big event. The fans have bought into the mystique. I don't know if the Nebraska players have, however. They know that in their era, the last five years, they've won 19 more games than Notre Dame and, of course, those two national titles. For Bob Davies, some of the pressure's off. He seems looser. I ask him, what does it take today as a big underdog besides just a W and an L? You know, the bottom line to beat Nebraska, what it says, it says you're a darn good football team because Nebraska is not a team that's going to come in and just play poorly. You know, they're not like a great passing team that might come in and just be off that day. Of course, not like the wind blowing is going to affect their offense. What Nebraska does is they line up and block you, and that's why they've been so consistent over the years. So rather than putting any more hype on this game as to what a win would do, the bottom line, it means we're a darn good football team, and we'll win a bunch more games if we can beat Nebraska. Long history of beating number one, but the recent history of taking on top ten teams. Four losses, including a loss to the Tennessee team, was taken to the woodshed by Nebraska out there in the Fiesta Bowl. But the Cornhuskers also trouble on the road against top 10 teams. They've lost their last three, but that was a couple years ago, different team. This offense looks awesome. Nebraska uses the best football offense ever devised for college football. They run the options here. They'll run the quarterback, the tailback, the quarterback, the tailback, and all of a sudden, in the middle will go number 15, Willie Miller. Watch today when you watch this game. Miller makes some big plays up the middle. I think Nebraska wins this ball game, but I think it's closer than the experts think. You know what? You're exactly right about the Nebraska offense, the way they kind of lull you to sleep. And I think early in this game, Notre Dame's defense is going to be so aggressive and so eager to come up and hit Eric Crouch and hit Dan Alexander. They have to be careful of 
of the quarterback, Eric Crouch, coming down the line, faking option, and then coming back and throwing the football downfield to Bobby Newcomb and Tracy Wistrom. Look for the Fighting Irish to keep it close because of the emotion in the game, but Nebraska is going to win this football game, but it is going to be very close. All the pregame emotion is very draining, and so is the heat. It is hot and sticky. feels like a midsummer afternoon here in South Bend. The buildup continues to the big one. Let's go back to the studio. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. And, John, I guess, you know, you start with that Nebraska defense. They gave up some big plays to San Jose State and Deion Whitaker last week. Yeah, last week was a scrimmage. Don't even count last <laughs> week. This week's the real thing, and you're going to see Nebraska play defense the way they can. Don't worry about their offense. It'll be okay. It's going to be Nebraska defense that gets a hold of this team. Well, you know, on Thursday night, Mike Godfrey and I talked about this game, and one thing that we really believe is that Tony Driver has a lot of pressure on him on the, in the Notre Dame secondary. He's got to come up and make the plays on the quarterback, Crouch. If he doesn't, tough day for Nebraska. And certainly Notre that Dame, game, sorry. yeah, for Notre yeah. Dame, that game gets underway in just about a half hour. We'll keep you up to date on our College Football Today studios. Also ahead on this view of halftime report, Texas, and what went on with their quarterbacks early, also check in on the tide. The Buick Halftime Report, Alabama and Vanderbilt, Crimson Tide trying to bounce back. One of the changes Mike DeBose made this week, going to Ahmad Galloway at tailback. He also went to Chris Draper at left tackle, and he made a good block there, and Ahmad is off to the races. 79 yards, he would take it. Alabama nailed the point after touchdown, took a 7-0 lead at that point, but Woody Woodenhofer's Vanderbilt Commodores hanging tough. Only a three-point game at Legion Field at the break. Texas and Louisiana Lafayette. Chris Sims started this game. Chris Sims, he's, he's changed his uniform number, wearing number one. There's interception number one. Terrence Hunter going the other way for the Raging Cajuns. 43 yards, he'd take it to the house. And Lafayette was up 10-0 at that point. Hodges Mitchell would bounce back. Did you notice a change in quarterback? It was Major Applewhite in there. Check on Matt Brown's design for rotating his quarterback, but Applewhite came in after the Sims interception. He has led all Texas scoring drives 24 to 10. Texas is up late in the first half of that ball game. We've got an entire day of football here on ESPN2 immediately following the game you're watching now in all likelihood. Georgia and South Carolina, they kick off at 3.30 Eastern. That's followed by the grudge match. Tommy Tuberville going back to Oxford and our nightcap, Illinois and San Diego State at 10 Eastern time. We've got a second half of football to play in Bloomington. Levron Williams, he had to get out of bounds or score on this play late in the first half. He scored Hoosiers by 15. The Senior Bowl comes early. Lavelle Edwards and Fisher DeBerry going at each other, and Lavelle got a three-point lead in that one. Boston College well on top of Army, 27-10. Duke and Northwestern, the SAT scores are good. The football scores not for Duke, 17-2. Duke is yet to score a touchdown. Pittsburgh up on Bowling Green, 20-3 at the break. John Terman with a couple of touchdown passes. Don't forget this afternoon on ESPN, you can see Tiger chase yet another bit of history as he tries to win the Bell Canadian opening. He's going to have to make up some ground. You can see at 3 Eastern whether he does that. Second half coming from Bloomington after this. In what has really been an entertaining ball game, the Hoosiers 28, North Carolina State 13. Rich Waltz, Don McPherson, and Antoine Randall put on quite a show, Don, in that first half. Did a little bit of everything. He certainly did, and he did it from different places on the field. He's showing why he's one of the most exciting quarterbacks in college football. Randall L., we all know he has the feet to run the football and get to the outside. You see him tuck it and run with the speed to break contain and get out to the perimeter. And then the long touchdown pass to Tommy Dorsey, and then a block. Here, lined up as a wide receiver, takes the handoff from Tommy Jones, and pitches the ball to LeVar. LeBron and LeBron Williams. He was so fast, he ran right by you. <laughs> Numbers in the first half. Indiana's offense is huge. The question about Indiana this year was, could they play defense? How did they do defensively in the first half? They've done a, a nice job so far in the first half of, of giving Phillip Rivers different looks after the snap of the football. Not allowing him to get into too much of a rhythm. He had one drive where he had a nice short passing game, got into a rhythm, but for the most part, they kept him off balance. That's going to be the, the key for them is to keep this young man off balance. Decent numbers, very good numbers for the first half, given that he's playing against a, a much better defense than he saw last week against Arkansas State. And it was Rivers' defense and his special team that helped set up 10 
of the 13 points they put on the board. North Carolina State will get the football to open things up. A look at Corin Robinson. Adam Brocker to kick it off. will bring it out to the 20-yard line. We were out here yesterday, and Adam Brocker kicked the few through the end zone. He got his team very excited to see they have a guy who can pin the team back and not allow too many returns. 18 years of age is Phillip Rivers. Jarvis Corum, the man they call Big Earth, 323 pounds. Shotgun and a handoff to Ray Robinson, who's across the 25 to the 26. Six yards on the pickup. Ron Robinson Bethel being tackled by number made the stop. Ron Bethel. I would look for both of these teams to play a little bit more aggressively on, on both sides of the football. The Indiana defense has had one half under James Bell's new system. I think they're going to feel a little bit more confident in the second half and, and fly around the football a little more. That man, Willie Wright, has been the primary the target, target for Phillip Rivers. Well, he's got the catch and the first down to the 34. And that's the short passing game that they went to in that 114 play drive in the second quarter. That's what they can need to continue to do to keep the confidence of Rivers up. Get this guy Willie Wright a few more catches. He has four already. Last week, Rivers completed passes to nine different teammates. Including that man, Ray Robinson. Justin Smith made the stop. The tackle made by number 27, Justin Smith. Talked about Big Earth before, number 68, left tackle. A good feat for a big man. He was a basketball player in high school and didn't play football until his last two years. He stands about 6'7. 323 pounds. He is Big Earth. He had a little too much around his equator, though, when, uh, when the president staff got there. He dropped some weight. A nice short throw to Corey Robinson. And I like Corey what North Carolina Robinson. State Rivers is doing. His equator was about, uh, what, 340, 345 when, uh, when Chuck Amato and, and the rest of them got here. Todd Stroud is the strength coach, the brand-new strength coach at North Carolina State. That's pre-Stroud, 356 he tipped the scales. Post Stroud, 323. And that body fat is the key there. That allows him to move a little bit more, drop the weight, make his muscle, give him some more mobility. Willie Wright, another Willie catch. Wright. This is a ball control offense. Even though they're putting it up. Willie Wright, the number 23 pick. Number 23 pick. They're doing a good job of, of switching up their play selection. They go to the shotgun and run the football. They go under, under center for Rivers and throw the short passing game. They haven't gone deep yet, but trust me, Norm Chow is baiting the Indiana defense. Todd Stroud, the strength coach. That throw is incomplete. Eric Leak was the intended receiver. Down to the sidelines, Holly Rowe. Guys, one of the most motivating things for Big Earth is their strength coach, Todd Stroud, made them take a shirt or a picture with their shirt off. He put it up in the weight room where everyone could see, even the women that would come in to lift weight. He said he didn't look like how he didn't like how his big belly looked. They called it the belly board, and that was his biggest motivation to drop the 40 pounds. That would be motivation. <laughs> Third down, Rivers, incomplete. Corey Robinson was the intended receiver. Hey, rules, go be smart, let's go. 
last two throws by Rivers, we call that pulling the string, not following through on the on the throw, and the ball is falling short of his receiver. Austin Herbert to punt it for North Carolina State. Darren Graham is deep. And the Wolfpack cover it inside the 10, down about the eight yard line. Antoine Randall L. And the Hoosiers get the ball for the first time in the second half next. Helmet is Tommy Jones, the backup quarterback for Indiana. He's not seen much time today. It's hard to argue because Randall L. is spectacular. We were told Jones would get a series or two. He's had two snaps. Indiana keeps it on the ground. We head down low. Holly Rowe. Holly? Guys, Cam Cameron told me at halftime that no matter what, they were going to score before they went into the locker room. They told Lebron that if he did not score, he was to fall down, stop the clock, so they could get the field goal unit out on the field. But he says he's very disappointed in how his team played. In the first half, they haven't come anywhere near their potential. Wow. 28-13 halftime lead. Randall L goes down. At the 11, to the studios, Reese Davis. Reese? All right, Rich Marshall at Michigan State again. The Mac trying to pull off another big win over the Big Ten, but freshman quarterback Jeff Smoker. Nice little move to get some time, and then he rifles it in there to Sean Foster. Michigan State up 17-10. They're late in the third. Texas up by three touchdowns now, all points, led by Major Applewhite, who came off the bench. Two quarterback system there at Texas, Don McPherson. It was more in vogue last year in college football. And Kent Cameron wanted to use two quarterbacks here today. His number one quarterback, Antoine Randall is facing a long third down. To the sidelines. Oh, what a throw. Percy Gaddis makes the catch. What a throw indeed. And that is what Indiana has to do with their offense. And I understand. Cam Cameron's comments about not playing up to their potential. They have to be able to do more of this. Drop back in the pocket. Don't allow Randall L to run. Drop back in the pocket and throw the football. He has the arm to make the throws. And Bercy Gaddis is one of his favorite targets. Nice move on Williams, the corner. Adrian Wilson on the coverage. How come we didn't see more of Tommy Jones? I don't know. I don't know why they brought him in with random plays that they did. I don't think it makes much sense to bring him in the football game and have him hand the ball off to Randall L. I think you have to let him get into a rhythm. You're doing two things. One, you're giving defensive coordinators something to think about. But two, you're getting Tommy Jones ready to play football. And especially when you expose your quarterback as much as they do with the Randall L, you have to get this guy ready to play. Well, at least he's got his helmet on now. That's a start. <laughs> on the pitch. Clayton White made the stop. Dwayne Hogan. <laughs> on the carry. group of linebackers for North Carolina State. They made 44 tackles combined last week. Antonio Burnett right there. He's a sophomore. LeVar Fisher is a junior. Clayton White, a senior. They've got a sophomore named Edric Smith, who is a, a very talented linebacker, who was injured all of last year, is trying to break that starting rotation. On the money to Jerry Dorsey. Ryan Williams, who had a punt block early in the game. But not enough for the first down. And the North Carolina State defense holds. Great North Carolina State defense right now for, for staying in their game plan, not allowing Randall Elton to get outside. Giving up a few yards here and there in the past game, but they haven't given up the big play. They 
They've blocked one punt already. Coin Robinson. Some nice moves in Robinson across midfield. The Wolfpack get a great return to the 42-yard line. 25 yards on the return by Corin Robinson, the sophomore out of Belmont, North Carolina. Wolfpack not done yet. Back to Indiana after this. 28-13, Indiana on top of North Carolina State. 8.42 left. Third quarter. Wolfpack will get the football at the Indiana 42. Philip Rivers. Good play action. Trying to go deep. And it's a completion. And it's a touchdown. Eric Lee came back to catch it and score. 42 yards. Not a good throw by Rivers. But a great adjustment by Lee. between Lavelle Edwards and Fisher to Barry, and boy, are the two teams putting on a show. I'm not sure Lavelle likes this one, though. Mike Thiessen to Ryan Fleming, great grab, three touchdown passes, putting the air into Air Force. It's 21 to 20, and Alabama's just come up with a goal line stand, albeit a questionable one, which is if Vanderbilt got in the end zone, 10-7 in the third. Thanks, Reese. 28-20, Indiana on top of North Carolina State. We're talking about LaBelle Edwards. There's Norm Chow, who was his offensive coordinator for so many years at BYU. His first year at North Carolina State. Indiana keeps it on the ground. And Jeremy Johnson will be there. We go to Holly Rowe. Guys, Randall L. is limping on the field. He is suffering from severe cramps right now during that whole last break in series. He was on the sideline with bags of ice under his leg and being stretched by the trainer. Not quite himself because of the heat that's come out here in the second half. The sun came out, the rain stopped, and it is sweltering. Hot, muggy day in Indiana. Maybe Tommy Jones is going to get some snaps after all. But Randall L. has been spectacular today. Lebron Williams. 
Seven yards on the carry. Adrian Wilson made the stop for North Carolina State. First down, Indiana. Rich, unless Randall L. gets hurt here and he gets to the point where he can't run the offense anymore, I would expect him to stay in the ball game. You want to give Tommy Jones some time, but not with only an eight-point lead. This game is very important for his team, and they know that Tommy Jones needs to help them, but Randall L. is the guy who's going to win games for them. Bridges trying to establish the run right now. Brian Lewis carrying. And Darius Bryant made the stop. And they're going to have to establish the run to take some pressure off of Randall L. This is where this offensive line with so many new people up front and people in different positions are going to have to step their game up and open up the run game without depending on Randall L's ability. Indiana on the ground. Pullback in captivity. <laughs> He's out to the 33-yard line. Jeremy Johnson is 5'11", 275. Jeff Fisher made the stop. He's 275, but he knows how to catch the football, and even more than that, he can tuck it and run. They like him in the short run game, but they also know he can catch the football and turn it up. Looks a little bit like big. Big Iron Head Hayward there from behind. He's got those big, strong legs. Wearing number one for a big guy. Not very common to see. Randall L goes down. Well, the number one is a story in itself, Don, because last year when he came to camp, he, he wanted to be number one. And Cam Cameron told him, look, we can't have any 275-pound guys wearing number one. That if you want to be number one, you come to camp at 260. So last year he came to camp at 260. He got to wear number one. But with the weightlifting and some more eating, <laughs> he got to camp this year at 275. And, and Cam Cameron said, ah, just keep the number. You know, the weightlifting program has been so so good that he's been able to carry that weight and see him on that last play get on the room and still run pretty well. Randall on the throw. And Johnson, and the big man will get a run down to the 20-yard line. He's got a first down. Randall L is not moving well, as Holly pointed out. The cramps are a real concern right now. Terry Cole made the stop. Let's talk about the, the ability of Johnson to run the ball in space. The young offensive big guy with the vision in the open field to cut it back to the inside. You see him look and look all the way back to the inside. Usually those three guys get the ball and go for the stick. Knocked down and incomplete. Lamar Fisher, the fine linebacker at the deflection. Chuck Amata said if he could, if he had a whole team of Lavar Fishers, he would have a national championship. At North Carolina State, he's a guy whose motor is always going. Randall L. was slipping that time. He had the game-ending tackle in the second overtime last week, along with 13 tackles. Second down. To the air again. Randall L. Caught by the tight end. Rather, Jerry Dorsey with the catch. Brian Williams made the stop. 16 yards on the pickup. Rich, we talked about the offensive line having to step up. That time they gave Render L tremendous time to stand in the pocket. This time with no one in his face. Good play action. You see Randall's tall. Randall standing tall in the pocket. Even for a guy of his height, he has good vision and can see through the scene to throw the football. First and goal. Johnson. Oh, the big man won't be stopped. He's in. Touchdown. All 275 of them. And that might be on the light side. That was an impressive drive for Indiana going right down the football field. 
and also an impressive drive for that man right there, Jeremy Johnson, at his size to catch the ball in space, run the ball in the middle, block for his quarterback. He did it all for Indiana on that on that last drive. He was very Randall L-like on that last drive. And that's a compliment. <laughs> familiar face and certainly a welcome face around here. John Mellencamp who was born in a small town and is a big time not only Indiana Hoosier fan but also a, a donor. He helped build the Mellencamp Center which is the indoor practice facility here for the, for the Hoosiers. They come out to the 20 yard line now. Corin Robinson didn't want to bring it out. There's the Mellencamp Center, one of the state-of-the-art practice facilities, not only in the Big Ten, but also in, in all of college football. They've really tried on this campus to make a big push for football, and as was evident in the last 24 hours, basketball, certainly with the, the national championships and all the media circus around Bob Knight, has a tendency to drain the attention away from football program. Rivers throw is incomplete. Ray Robinson, the intended receiver. Rivers is still a football player, and the one thing football players should never do, think. They're not good when they think. And Rivers, the more he plays at this level, the more he's going to start to think. And that's when you see his ball getting thrown behind people. You see him pulling the, the trigger a little too early and throwing the ball low. He has to play with instinct. Right now, he's starting to think too much. He's seeing the field well, but he's starting to think too much. On second down. A throw to Corey Robinson. Dwayne Stone made the stop. The only way to start your NFL Sundays is with NFL Countdown. Sundays, 11 a.m. on ESPN. Chris Berman, Stuart Scott, Sterling Sharp, Tom Jackson, and Chris Mortensen, not in that order. Two hours of football news, stats, and previews. And then, of course, NFL Prime Time, presented by Miller Lite, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. It all leads up to the ESPN Sunday night NFL game. Third down six. A little dump to Derek Roberts. And Roberts, who caught the 12-yard touchdown pass in the first half, has the first down. Devin Schaefer and Dwayne Stone made the stop. Number 42, Dwayne Stone. That time Rivers showed nice patience, knowing that he had a dog coming from the opposite side, a dog meaning a linebacker coming on a stunt, on a blitz. Justin Smith came and he allowed Derek Roberts to wait for Justin Smith to come and then release into the secondary. Rivers. Swallowed up Derek Barnett. That time Barnett over Big Earth. It's a chance to push, push, get a little bit of push on Big Earth coming in from the left side of your screen. There's Barnett on Big Earth. I don't know. You know, Big Earth was at River State in the pocket. I don't think you could see him until River stepped up. On second down. Swing pass to Ray Robinson. And he's out across the 40. Pushing and shoving along the sideline. We've been talking about Big Earth and He's just such a fun guy to watch because of his size, but watch his speed and his feet out there on the perimeter. Got to hit somebody He's bigger. Better. Somebody other than his own guy, but you know, that's one thing coaches like to see. That's something that you, you really can't teach him. You like to see a guy that size with good feet to get out on the perimeter like that. Movement flags. North Carolina State moves. 
William Brown, the left guard, he apparently moved. For the snap, all start against the offense. Third down. More treatment for Antoine Randall L. As he tries to prevent the cramp. No pickle juice, apparently, on the <laughs> Indiana sideline. That all of a sudden has become the popular tonic to prevent cramping. Randall L, 212 yards to the air, 79 on the ground. River stepping up, scrambling, and he's got the first down. Dominique Smith finally corralled him. Dominique Smith hung, hung in there and made the, not the sack, but made the tackle, but not before Rivers could get the first down. He stepped, he stepped right out of his white shoes. <laughs> I don't think that was because of his blazing speed. I think, I think Dominique Brown probably just gave him a flat tire. Dominic Smith just gave him a flat tire on that play. All right, he stepped out. <laughs> Robinson breaks the tackle, and Robinson's got a first down. Ray Robinson. Dominique Smith made the stop, 17 yards on the carry. Sixty yards on the day for Ray Robinson, the junior. He had 139 yards last week. All day long, Indiana has not done a good job of tackling. North Carolina State back. Blitz coming. Rivers got his tight end. Willie Wright again. Joe Gonzalez made the stop. Sixth catch for Willie Wright. It's the same stuff that we've been seeing by Justin Smith coming in right here and vacating. He's got zone coverage everywhere else in the field. It allows Willie Wright, the middle of the field, to work in space. Coaches will tell you and talk about in space, Donnie. What does that mean? Why, why, why do they want to get athletes the ball in space? Well, they want to give them the ball a chance where they can catch the ball and turn around and then decide where they can go. Not running across the zone, but giving them the field to work with after they catch the football. Willie Wright has some field to work with, and he's inside the 20 to the 18-yard line at seven catches for Wright. You're seeing a pattern that's not uncommon when you have a young quarterback two things. One, throwing the ball in the middle of the field, and two, finding a big, dependable tight end. At 6'4", Willie Wright is a big target for Philip Rivers. And he certainly has been dependable today. Productive afternoon for his first start. Chuck Amato, 1967, his senior year as a middle linebacker, he convinced the coach at North Carolina State to let the defense paint their shoes white. They were the white shoes defense. Earl Edwards was the head coach. And they were a good defense. And they brought back not only the white shoes, but also the new logo on the helmet. They replaced the old ones. They got a, got a new one. There's Chuck back in the day. He played from 65 through 67. You thought Joe Namath was the first, didn't you, Donnie? <laughs> <laughs> and he was every bit a middle linebacker. I just hear a Beatles tune in the back of my yeah. head right there. 1967 when they won the Liberty Bowl. Ray Robinson inside the 15, down to the 14 yard line. First down North Carolina State. We're kind of watching this North Carolina State team grow up 
in this football game. They came out and struggled against the Big Ten team, but as the day has progressed, Donnie, so has their offense. They have, but they've hung around, and the one thing Chuck Amato wants and needs to do, and that's the finish. And they have hung around in this ball game. They're only down 15 points right now, but they've hung around this ball game, and they're still playing right now a nice long drive. Still playing well. But not playing anymore in the third quarter because it has expired. North Carolina State with an 18-year-old quarterback has come to the Big Ten. And Phillip Rivers has had his moments. A 12-yarder and a 42-yarder for scores. 35-20. We're headed to the fourth quarter. Indiana by a couple of touchdowns. Young Phillip Rivers driving his team. Incomplete as he looked for Coach Ray Jackson. Holly Rowe down below. James Bell, defensive coordinator. to keep this Hoosier defense intact. Jackson is hit. Joslyn Goodman. And at the bottom of that pile was Chris Dealman, the sophomore. There's a look at Goodman. That was a textbook play by Joslyn Goodman. Here's a look at Thielman, who's had, had to go both ways. 38 snaps. 31 of them on defense. Rivers drops. Robinson on the short screen. Rich Robinson just dropped what would have been a touchdown. He had two people out there helping him, ready to escort him into the end zone, and he saw it. He just took his eyes off the football too soon. The quick decision by Rivers. Took his eyes off the ball. Once again, the ball thrown a little bit behind, but he had enough room in the middle there. If he makes the catch, it's six points. And North Carolina State will go on fourth down. Fourth and nine. Rivers all alone. And here comes the blitz. The throw. It is caught for the touchdown. Hey, Willie Wright, have a day. On fourth down and nine, Willie Wright in traffic. And Rivers, the 18-year-old, was really popped. 13 yards on the touchdown. They will kick the extra point. Rivers is feeling it on the sideline. Stunned silence here in Bloomington. a big, big miss. Because now North Carolina State needs two more scores. It's a nine-point lead. Kent Passingham misses the extra point. He's only 18. Phillip Rivers has got a lot of guts. Willie Wright has a touchdown. 35-26. Phillip Rivers getting some attention. It looks like he just had the wind knocked out of him, Don. That's what you do when you get the wind knocked out and you get a coach to pull your pads away so you can get some wind back in there. That makes sense. Back to the 20 yard line. You want to know what it's like to have a big, tall tight end, Willie Wright. If you're the quarterback, Rivers, you just put the ball up in the middle of the field and let your big tight end go for it. You're going to get hit anyway. He throws up right between Gonzalez and Goodman. It's a jump ball and a great effort by Willie Wright. Now, Rivers doesn't go down, but watch the end of the play. Justin Smith laid the hit on him. Kind of a delayed reaction. And then you see him start to double over. That means, oof, there's no air in there. Now, how about the health of the other quarterback, Antoine Randall L., who had some trouble with cramping in the third quarter. He hasn't been on the field for a while. 
Dwayne Hogan slides out to the 26 yard box. Let's go to the studios and Reese Davis. Reese? All right, guys, Marshall and Michigan State. Byron Leftwich, his team down by 10 in the fourth quarter, trying to keep the nation's longest winning streak alive. He finds David Foy, the senior, wide open. Thundering hurt within a field goal about halfway through the fourth. And, oh, yeah, Drew Brees, a couple of touchdown passes. You know, Purdue has Notre Dame next week. I don't think the Irish thinking about that yet. Not yet. But mark this day down in your calendar, Reese. Indiana and Purdue, November 18th to end the season. And I think for both teams, that game will mean more than just the heated rivalry that it is. Indiana feels that this is the year that they finally turn the corner. You know, three years ago in the Big Ten, there were four new coaches hired. Ron Turner at Illinois, Joe Tiller at Purdue, Glenn Mason at Minnesota, and Cam Cameron here at Indiana. This is year four for all of them. Tiller, of course, had the fantastic start and has had a great run. Last year was the year that both Ron Turner and Glenn Mason got their programs into bowl games, and Cam Cameron's Indiana Hoosiers came maybe two or three plays away from getting there. Which fuels the fire for this year. And the expectations that people have around this Hoosier program. Lamar Fisher made the stop. When you talk about programs turning the corner, Cam Cameron felt that even though he had a losing season last year, he felt that it was necessary because it gave him the incentive to make the changes, bringing in Hal Hunter, bringing in James Bell, to make the necessary changes. He felt like he had to bring in those types of coaches to bring this team to the next level. We hear next level so often, and Cameron sort of elaborated on that. He said it's to be competitive in the upper half of the Big Ten. That is when this program will have turned the corner, so to speak. Randall L. He throws that out so well, Don. Derek Graham made the catch. Yeah, you know, Michael, you know, Michael Vick has a great arm, and people compare the two quarterbacks, but Vick doesn't have the touch nor the accuracy that Randall L. does. And I don't think Vic uses as many of his teammates as Randall L. does. He throws the ball to a lot of different receivers, moves out, out of the pocket, but stays in the box. And, and you're right, Rich, he is very accurate with the football. Second down. Michael Vick was on the cover of just about every preseason national college football publication. But the comparison between these two quarterbacks, they're a little different in the sense that Vick is a little bigger and a little faster. But uh, I think Randall L. is just as electric and maybe a more polished quarterback in terms of calling plays and, and, and operating and moving his team. And don't forget, Randall L. plays in a much more competitive league in the Big Ten. That's spoken by... A big, east, a big East alum. Johnson. The corral by Fisher. Adrian Wilson made the stop. Dwayne Hogan on the cup on the carry. And there's a flag down at the 48-yard line. I like what Indiana's doing right now in establishing a run game back up in the middle. Everyone around the Big Ten knows about Antoine Randall L. He's going to be marked off against Indiana. And obviously everybody knows about Michael Vick, but, but Randall L.'s reputation and his exploits are pretty well documented. Chop block against the offense, 15 yards, he's foul to foul, first down. That's going back against Indiana. And it's a big costly penalty. We never underestimate when you have a quarterback like Randall L. And this is where quarterbacks like Randall L. make their make their mark on the third and long, second and long plays where they have to make something big happen where it seems like not much good can come out of it. Hal Hunter, the offensive coordinator, was the assistant head coach at Louisiana State 
in the last few years. He said that they played a lot of night games. So during the morning, before their meetings, they would turn on the TV and watch football. And he said about four or five times last year, they saw Randall L. After the 40-yard line. And the, the LSU coaches, when they got into their coaches' meetings, the first thing everyone wanted to talk about was, did you see that quarterback for Indiana? And then you had a chance to see him at a clinic where you had hundreds of kids, and Randall L. came in and just organized all the kids. And Hal Hunter thought, wow, that's a great leader right there. I wish I could coach a kid like that. And lo and behold, just a couple of weeks later, he gets a phone call from Cam Cameron. Clayton White is down. Of course, Hunter was the interim coach at, at LSU, finished the season by beating Arkansas. LSU made their coaching change late in the year. Second down, 14. Indiana eating some clock. Up 35-26. Randall out. Get hard. Flags go down. D'Antonio Burnett. Put the hit on Randall L. A flag is down back at the 40-yard line where the pass came down. Brian Lewis was the intended receiver. Was it a catchable ball, Don? I don't think the ball was catchable, but I think the flag was thrown before the ball was in the air, and it may be a, a penalty against the offense. Interference against Indiana. Usually if that flag is thrown before the ball is in the air and it's thrown that deep, you have a push-off. Defensive pass interference, an offensive pass interference against Indiana is refused. Right in the middle of the field coming this way. There's the, the penalty right there. It was a tie-up. And there's the flag. But the ball wasn't in the air yet, Don. Is that still interference? What? I think the call was the receiver was throwing the block down the field. Mercy Gattis thought Randall L was going to take off and decided to make a block prematurely. That's the flag. That's the flag. And when Randall L throws the ball, then it becomes an interference. Gotcha. Third down. Randall L again rolling out. This one is short. So complete to LeBron Williams. Left side of your screen, coming in. Right here is the hole. He thinks Randall L is going to run with the football, so he makes a block. Then when Randall L throws the ball, that's to come to the legal play. I'll buy that. Indiana has to punt now. to the 20-yard line. So the question is, is there more left in the tank? Well, that young freshman, Philip Rivers, will find out. Good job in the truck. Nice job, guys. That's the right ankle of linebacker Clayton White of North Carolina State. You don't like to see a player with his hand, his head in his hand like that. That's an indication that he's not feeling very confident. He's trying all types of orthotic to more foot support. Ten minutes left to this football game. And there's Philip Rivers, the 18-year-old quarterback. A throw to the sideline. Corin Robinson forgot the ball. For the studio, three standing three. Rich and East Lansing, we showed you Marshall creeping closer to Michigan State. Spartans trying to answer with a drive, and they go to the big fella. T.J. Duckett, and all it's downhill from there. He'll take it to the house, 18 in a row. Marshall has won, but that winning streak, the nation's longest, in jeopardy. But all is not lost for the MAC. A couple of MAC teams leading Big Ten foes in the first half. Here the Big Ten leads the NCC. Indiana on top of North Carolina State. Rivers dumps it out to Roberts to the 26-yard line. In about 20 minutes, ABC's lineup begins. What a day it is. Number four, Miami against number 15, Washington. Oregon and number five, Wisconsin. 
Missouri at, at number 19 Clemson. Check your local listings for the game in your area. You can get all the games on pay-per-view by calling your local cable or satellite company. Movement and flag. Chuckamata wants his team to finish. Does not want penalties, does not want sloppy play. Both coaches asking their team to be disciplined now as the stretch of this ball game. A long conference by this ACC officiating crew. Before the snap, ball start, get the offense. This is one of the most responsibilities that, as a head coach now. He has to deal with the officials a little bit more. One of those things that he's not totally comfortable with just yet. Third down. And nine. Not a good throw, and it's almost intercepted. That's the first really bad throw we've seen Rivers make. Rob Bethel had the interception. Willie Wright was the intended receiver. And that was just a late throw by Rivers. He had his man on time. If he throws the ball on time, he has the man in his own. He hangs on to it just a little bit too long. And that allows Bethel to come up and make the play. Looking at too many things to see his eyes. Flag down, Indiana hit the punter. Derek Graham has the football. And Rivers is going to get another chance right now. Probably get a first down out of this. The flag is back at the nine yard line. And Chuck Amato is not real happy. Check the model of saying to find the penalty. There's, there's conversations going on in two spots. Cam Cameron is watching one in front of his bench where the officials have huddled. And there's a brief discussion going on with Chuck Amato right now in front of the North Carolina State bench. Officials have picked up the flag. They have five yards, running into the kicker, is refused, first down. So it's not roughing the kicker. The five-yard penalty did not mean a first down, and that's why the penalty's been refused. Donnie, is that a rough or a running into? Well, I think it's a running into because what you had were, were two Indiana players who kind of pinballed off one another and inadvertently ran into the kicker. And I think that's why it was just running into and not roughing. I don't think Chuck Amato would agree with that. <laughs> Indiana football. to the 38-yard line. You take another look, coming from the right side. One player into another. But that, you know, they're the same team, so that... I think it all has to do with, with intent. And one player was trying to avoid, the other player bumped into him. You're not buying it either. No, I'm not buying it. I mean, the kicker still got hit. Now to the 42-yard line is Hogan. He's short of the first down. Now it's third down and a long three as Indiana tries to eat some clock. Remember, North Carolina State out there, last touchdown, missed the extra point. 
That would have made it an eight-point game. That would have made it reachable with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. But the Wolfpack needs to down. two scores. Now we look for Jeremy Johnson to come in big in this series. And he's in right now at the fullback spot. He's tough to miss. He'll lead the way for Lebron. And Lebron Williams is very close to the first down. He's going to be a little short. This is going to put, I think, Cameron in a little tough decision. Although his defense has been playing well in the second half, they maintain the intensity. James Bell wanted them to have throughout the ball game. Fourth down and a yard. They're going to kick it. Andy Payne is in. He's had one block. Remember, North Carolina State blocked four punts in their upset of Texas last year. Get a little closer on this one. Corey Robinson, he didn't get his, his uh, two-yard cushion. And that'll be a five-yard penalty. Well, they're going to call this on Bethel, but I think this is another questionable call because Bethel was being blocked right before he made the tackle. have been busy. The Hoosiers lead it by nine. If you've enjoyed Antoine Randall, you'll love the Q-Dog. Quincy Carter leading the dog. He's had his pickle juice. Dog's going against South Carolina. They have new goalposts in Columbia, Rich. Oh, that's good to know. And it's good to know they've got pickle juice. Apparently, they don't have it here in Indiana. And Antoine Randall has been cramping up. Philip Rivers with a quick throw to Brian Peterson. North Carolina State's offense is moving right now. The 18-year-old quarterback, Philip Rivers. Wolfpack down 21-3 in this ballgame. 21-13 at the half. Drew within eight. And it's now within nine. Looks like North Carolina State's going to a no-huddle offense. Chance to see the savvy boys of that young man. Ray Robinson, flags go down, lots of them in front of the Indiana bench. Which is not a good sign for North Carolina State. Holding against the Wolfpack. That was one of more of the more of the decisive calls they made all day. Our game notes: Philip Rivers, 25 of 41. Indiana has won the the battle on the ground, and Randall Ellis had some big plays. But we talked about the importance of big plays. College football has become a, a sport of big plays, and Indiana has five of them over 20 yards. In fact, two of them over 50 yards. Mercy Gaddis' 70-yard touchdown catch. Jerry Dorsey's 57-yard touchdown catch from Randall Allen. Remember, LeBron Williams had an 80-yard reception and run called back on a penalty. A lot of explosive weapons in the end. Yeah. That one came a little too soon. Jericho Cotchery, the intended receiver. All in all, Phillip Rivers has played a solid ball game. He's had a few drop balls on him. He's thrown the ball behind a few people. There's a good look at Doc Holliday, former West Virginia wide receiver coach. One of those coaches that Chuck the model brought in here that was highly sought after. Now, this is quite a staff at North Carolina State. Only their second game. Flags go down. We talk so much about Norm Chow and Buddy Green, the two coordinators for Chuck Amato. 
Ball start. Gets the offense. Yeah. Second down. Armado coming from Florida State. years as the assistant head coach at Florida State. 11 ACC titles, eight at Florida State. One is a North Carolina State player and two is a North Carolina State assistant coach. Picked off, intercepted. Joshua Goodman. Interception that an 18-year-old Philip Rivers has thrown in almost eight quarters, actually nine quarters of football. They played a, a double overtime. And James Bell has to be happy with the way his linebackers have played. There's Johnson right there, just to play a little bit of center field, watching the eyes of the quarterback. That's what happens when a young quarterback keys in on one player. Dawson right there in the middle of your screen, looking at the quarterback all the way. Excellent play by Goodman. A hundredth attempt for Rivers before that interception. 28 yards on the return, and it gives Indiana good field position, though they're not ready to take advantage of it. And the Hoosiers have to call a timeout with six minutes left. Antoine Randall L will have to wait. So will we. Anthony Thompson, the fine running back at Indiana, now the assistant head coach here with the Hoosiers. Antoine Randall L. Flags go down. Randall L inside the 10, and he's down to the eight yard line. Our Aflac trivia question this week involves Anthony Thompson. He finished second in the 89 Heisman Trophy race. Who won that year? And here's a hint. It was not Don McPherson. Aflac. Though you share something with Anthony Thompson. You were a runner-up in the Heisman voting as well, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he won the Maxwell Award that same year in 89. Who won it the year that you were runner-up? Tim Brown. That great, great wide receiver. Notre Dame. Yard penalty. Randall L to the air. And it's incomplete. You know something, Don? Anthony Thompson is the assistant head coach. He may be the head coach here before too long. Let me explain. Cam Cameron's wife, Missy, is expecting their third child in early October. And Cameron told us, you know what? When I get that call, I'm gone. I'm out of here. Even if we're on the road getting ready for a game, or if we've got a game here, I'm going to be there for the birth of that child. And Anthony Thompson will take over as the head coach if Cameron has to miss a game. And when he asked Anthony Thompson if he would take that assignment, he said he almost fainted. <laughs> Took a couple of days and came back and said he'd be happy to be. The pitch to Williams. LeBron Williams is knocked out of the 15-yard line. Adrian Wilson made the hit. LeVar Fisher was in on it. Anthony Thompson finishing second in 89. Andre Ware, University of Houston. With the Heisman Trophy winner in 1989. It was hard to dispute Andre Ware that year with all the numbers they put up with the run and shoot. Yeah, speaking of Heisman's, how about... Uh, Antoine Randall L. Well, I think just as not many people know about him around the country, um, they're going to have to win a lot of football games for him to be up there in the voting. On third down, Randall L. Throwing. Diving catch at the three. Percy Gaddis made it. And if he keeps playing like this, like he's played today, doing all the things he's done, Indiana will win some football games. 
in the crunch time, you go to your man who makes the difference. He's got guys in his face and his most dependable receiver right there, Versi Gaddis. Nice catch and also stays in bounds. Keeps the clock moving. Four catches for 108 yards for Gaddis. Antoine Randall is a lot like Anthony Thompson in a sense that he doesn't have a real good supporting cast. Thompson was kind of a one-man show when he was here. And that's what Randall has been the last two years. Whistles and flags stop the play. I guess the question is, Don, can Indiana assemble enough of a cast and give him enough help to make a run in the Big Ten? Well, they definitely have a problem with depth. And I think that's going to be the difference once they get into, into Big Ten play. But I think they have enough solid players in their, in their starting 22 that they can get it done in the Big Ten. The difference becomes in their depth and also, obviously, on defense. They have to shut teams down a lot better than they did last year. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Holly? Guys, Versi Gaddis was voted as one of the team captains for this team, and he said their goal is to take part of the load off of the shoulders of Antoine Randallel. He, they said that he needs a lot more help, and they want to give it to him this season. Andy Payne, 25-yard field goal attempt. From 25 yards, he's never missed from this distance. And he still has. Indiana adds to their lead, four and a half left. And who's your lad? 38-26. Now that's a big guy. Four and a half minutes left. That is deep. Indiana on top. Now the field goal doesn't necessarily change the equation of needing two scores. It's a 12-point ball game. Corn Robinson and North Carolina State had a wonderful comeback last year. You talk about it, the true test of a of a quarterback. They had a drive to score at the end of the first half. Phillip Rivers led them on a drive with two minutes left for the tying field goal in regulation. And then they won the game in double overtime. So the Wolfpack had to come back last week. Julius Patterson on the return. Let's go to Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Rick, remind me again which coach it was that revolutionized the passing game and which guy's the option guy. Air Force and Brigham Young, Lavelle Edwards against Fisher DeBerry. This is Fisher DeBerry's guy, Mike Thiessen, his fourth touchdown pass of the day, matching a school record. Air Force is throwing for more yards than Brigham Young. Nebraska's on top of Notre Dame by a touchdown. Eric Crouch from 62 out. Huskers by seven. Reese, I was at the Mountain West kickoff luncheon, and Fisher DeBerry got up, and the question was, in the spring game, Air Force threw for like four or five hundred yards. And Lavelle Edwards wanted to know, you guys gonna throw the ball a little more? And Fisher said, nah, 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 nah. We're just showing that. Uh, showing today. Rivers with a long throw. And catch! Oh! Cole Robinson with the catch. And the Wolfpack right back in business. A 39-yard completion. <laughs> My goodness. You will not see a more accurate thrown, accurately thrown football. He put this ball right on the numbers. That's on the money. Sherrod Wallace on the coverage. North Carolina State has all their timeouts, but they need to score. Had to reload the shotgun. Penalty flight goes down. And Willie Wright is tackled. It'll stop the clock. Great discipline defense that time by Indiana, not going with the flow, staying backside, and knowing that Willie Wright's the guy they like to throw the football to. Upside, gets the defense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Ouch. It stops the clock as they mark off the five yards. I give those guys a compliment. They go and do something silly. They restart the clock on the ready for play. North Carolina State. On first and five. Rivers. A wobbler. And another catch. Touchdown, Willie Wright. 
27 yards. The Wolf Pack are not dead yet. James Bell could not be happy. I was stating it the last series. He had to be happy with his defense. This time, letting Willie Wright get into the secondary, the big tight end, getting into the secondary and catching the ball in the corner, not what you want to see. Wright had a 13-yard touchdown. Passingham's point is good. North Carolina State. And Chuck Amato. They had a comeback, double overtime win last week. They are within five now, 3.27 left. Right side of your screen, here's Green right here. Excuse me, Willie Wright right there on the corner route. He got a little bit of a pick there, but it didn't, didn't help Ron Bethel much catching up to Willie Wright. And the patience and the time of the offensive line and the patience of Phillip Rivers to allow Wright to get into the secondary. And there's Big Earth, gives him plenty of time. About time we see this kid smile and have some, some fun. No smile yet, he wanted to go for two. It's a five point ball game, three and a half minutes left here. Is it too early for an onside kick, Don? You let your defense try to to stop him? Well, the defense has done a good job so far, but I would go with the onside kick. I think it's a good time to go for it. I don't think Indiana will be expecting it with three and a half minutes left. Thirty-eight, thirty-three. Three and a half minutes left. Now remember, North Carolina State has all three timeouts left. Let's go to restate. Down Reed. in Columbia, we're about to get started with that border war between the dogs and the Gamecocks, and we'll get you out there just as soon as we finish up up in Bloomington. Uh, Rich, you guys having some exciting finishes going on here, so uh, the dogs about to kick it off, and we're about to kick off with NC State and Indiana after that latest Wolfpack touchdown. Watch guys getting ready to kick. They're underway in Columbia. We'll get you down there just as soon as we finish up in Bloomington, okay? Thanks, Reese. Don McPherson thinks onside kick. Indiana is thinking that way as well. Passing him. Onside kick! The flags are down. down. Back of the 35, they may have been offside. Maybe offside, you're right. Woo! Cam Cameron thinks so, or at least he hopes so. Yeah, you're right. North Carolina State recovering the onside kick. Well, that's the onside kick. Remember, these are that's ACC officials. North Carolina State and Chuck Amato. Now that they've done it once, let's see if we can see the, the guilty party. Now at the bottom of your screen, usually guys on the end. Right there. There's your line. There's your offside. Ball has not been kicked. Good call by the official. Now, Don, since the surprise has been sprung, do you kick it deep? Now you kick it deep, but I, I don't expect him to kick the ball high in the air. I expect him to kick it low, make it difficult to handle. Austin Herbert will tee it up. Austin Herbert is one of several true freshmen in North Carolina State that have to, have to grow up very quickly. The hands team is on for Indiana. Remember, there's three and a half minutes left in this ball game. And Antoine Randall L is in there on hands team. Darren Graham all the way back to his five yard line. Graham. 
the 38 yard line. Indiana with decent field position. And now Antoine Randall, who was in there on the return, will have to get some first down. 309 left. First half, second half. What's happened, Don? Well, I think they've gone to a little bit more conservative attack. I think Randall L. with his hamstring or, or whatever was ailing him because of his cramps, I think it has limited his play, getting into the perimeter, handing the ball off more, and going more with a controlled passing game. That in turn has allowed North Carolina State to stay in this ball game and come within five. North Carolina State has all three timeouts left. Hogan and Williams. It's Randall L. to Williams trying to stay in bounds, and he does with a sizable gain for the 47. Georgia and South Carolina immediately following the completion of this one. Smart play by Williams, staying in bounds. You say it over and over and over, but you. You never know. You always get a, a, a running back who wants to get more yards, lowers his shoulder, and goes out of bounds and stops the clock. With smart play by Williams. Second down, three. And a flag comes down, which stops the clock. For the snap, illegal substitution against the offense. Five yards, second down. How about that, Donnie? Hard to tell them where that came from. I would imagine Kent Cameron saying, what was illegal about that substitution? One of the points of emphasis this year is in cleaning up some of the deception that goes on when an offense shuttles plays in and players in. Five yard penalty, stepped off. Oftentimes it's confusing to the defense. Not only do they lose yards, but it stops the clock. And Indiana, North Carolina State is called a timeout. So North Carolina State burns a timeout. We'll take one as well. Five-point ball game in Indiana. Don draw this. Let's see if it was an illegal substitute. You have a receiver who goes all the way to the line and stops, and then you have a defensive back who follows him and then comes back. And he comes back because he believes the receiver is out of bounds and no longer part of the play. Whoops. When he steps back in bounds, that's an illegal substitution. It's not a substitution, but it is an illegal move. They restarted the clock on the ready for play. That's why North Carolina State had to take the timeout. And that play goes nowhere, though it stays in battle. North Carolina State will burn another timeout. The Wolf Pack, with Indiana facing a third down right now, is down to one timeout left. We remind you that future game sales. And it looks like the Wolf Pack may get the ball back, although we said this earlier, Randall L came up with a big play to keep the drive alive. Trying to put a lot of pressure on on Philip Rivers, who has to be thinking on the sideline, what was the last time, what will get the ball down the field as quick as possible. Immediately following the completion. The receiver has to break his route off and look for the ball right away.
in just his second.